His home in California. All of us will long remember his creative leadership of the league and his interest in and the service to the NFL fans. We ask you to pause for a moment of silence in his memory. Super Bowl 31, a matchup of quarterbacks Elway and Favre, two of the favorites for this year's MVP, but Elway won't play today because of his hamstring. Today does match Mike against Mike, Holmgren against Shanahan, two coaches produced and influenced by the 49er machine. Shanahan, however, without Elway, will try to prove to the rest of the NFL that 12-1 Denver is more than John Elway. Bill Musgrave makes his first ever NFL start at quarterback for the Broncos. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Green Bay, where it's 31 degrees. Chill factor is under 10 wind at 20 miles an hour. Elway isn't here. The world wonders, is Denver going to be a different team? You know one thing about Denver. You don't become 12-1 in the National Football by just being lucky. you got to be a good football Football team. Think about these two stats. They're number one in rush offense. They're number one in rush defense. And Elway doesn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> and for the Packers, Mike Holmgren and the players all say the man. We win with a man, Brett Favre. That he is the man. Brett Favre, in my opinion, the best and most exciting player in the NFL. And look what he does with this system that favors the quarterback first in a lot of categories. As Mike Holmgren says, we win and lose according to how our quarterback plays. Today will be no different. He will have to play well for Green Bay to win. And the Packers are tough on the other side of the ball, led by the Minister of Defense, Reggie White. Watch one another's back. Let's take care of each other. And let's have some fun. Let's go! 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 Let's go!
Santana, Dotson, Gilbert Brown, and Sean Jones, the front four, with Simmons, Coons, and Williams. Coons, the leading tackler. Newsom and Evans at the corners. Leroy Butler having a career season. He has uh, five interceptions, five and a half sacks, and veteran Eugene Robinson is the other safety. Here comes Newsom on a corner blitz, and they run the other way with Davis out to the 35, where it'll be third down and four. What do you expect to see, Paul? First of all, Denver, you don't change anything. You have the same game plan coming in. You just change quarterbacks. This system's the same. Yeah, don't change it, Paul. But Green Bay's defense today, the one thing they like to do is get to Bill Musgrave, hit him, get him out of rhythm, because there has to be some self-doubt in, in his mind. And also, Green Bay got to stop the inside runs. Lately, everybody has been hurting them with the run inside. Third down and a long three. First time Musgrave without a back in the shotgun. A quarterback draw. And Musgrave has a first down at the 42-yard line. Don't you love it? I mean, you would think John Elway would do this. The very first play, it's a pass play. They put him with nobody in the backfield, and look what Musgrave does. Well, it's a good call by Mike Shanahan. Takes the nerves out of the game for Bill Musgrave. Five wide receivers were out there in the field. They had it spread. It gives a good hole for Bill Musgrave to go in there and get rid of some of those jitters and, you know, take that first lick of the day. Even though it's not a hard one, it has to make him feel good. Eugene Robinson tripped him up at the 42, a first down. Number one rushing team in the NFL, the Denver Broncos. This is Aaron Craver, and they continue to work on the left side. Fumble the ball, and the Green Bay Packers say they have it. They do. Sean Jones, number 96, the veteran from Northeastern, comes up with it. You know, you're successful in your first series of downs, and then something like this happens. You just say Craver comes to the outside. Sean Jones not only strips the ball, but also he gets the fumble. That's great defensive end play. Both the forced fumble and the recovery by the veteran Jones, and Brett Favre takes the field with a first down at the Denver 41-yard line. Only William Henderson behind him. They come out with uh, two wides and two tight ends, and Favre, plenty of time, now has to buy some time and throws it up for grabs. And uh, Andre Risen, the ball well out of bounds. Alfred Williams, who leads the league in sacks, put the pressure and uh, added a little turf to the helmet of Favre. Here is the Green Bay offense. Michaels had some problems at left tackle. Rookie from Southern California. He's light. Taylor, Winters, Timmerman, Dotson. It's a relatively young starting front. Bennett, leading rusher. Henderson, the blocker. Freeman and the, the veteran Risen acquired this year on the outside, and Mark Shamura, good news for Green Bay, returns at tight end. Keith Jackson, of course, also in that tight end stable for Green Bay. Here's the man, Favre, again, MVP numbers this season, as uh, he did last year when he won that award. Play action fake, down the middle, incomplete. Intended for Chamura, who slipped as he tried to reach back. The Denver Bronco defense, and that's the reason why they are so much improved to 12-1. Number one against the run, as Paul pointed out. Hasselback for Dan Williams, who has the flu, will not play today. Lodish, Michael Dean Perry, Alfred Williams, with the sack master. Mobley, the rookie from Kutztown, has played well. Aldridge, Romanowski, a pro bowl season. Crockett and Washington at the corners. And Braxton, he's having a career year at safety with seven interceptions. And the hitter, the guy they call lumber, Steve Atwater. Third and ten. And a draw. To Dorsey Levins breaks a tackle, has the first down at the 28. Phil, the Packers are so pass-oriented that on third and long, time and time again, they fool the defense with a run. Well, you're right, Dick. When they run on third and long, nobody's expecting it. It's a complete surprise, and this time it is again. Denver rushing the passer in coverage. Everybody back. Dorsey Levins did this last week against the Chicago Bears. In these situations, there's nobody there to tackle him. He makes something happen. Jumpy Gathers was the only guy that had a shot at him. He got one arm on him, and that wasn't enough. 13-yard pickup on third and 10. Levins, who uh, started at Notre Dame, played two years, and then transferred to Georgia Tech. Big back at 235. This time it's Edgar Bennett and Bennett Corral. Bennett with uh, 725 yards to lead the Packers in rushing this season. Williams and Perry 
made the hit. You know, one of the things about the Denver Broncos we've heard all year long is that if there is a weakness on their defense, it's the corners, Phil. But we haven't seen anybody beat the corners yet this year. Nobody can take advantage of those corners if there is a weakness there, Paul, because the pass rush is good by the Denver Broncos and Green Bay. They've got to protect Brett Favre. They struggle with it every week. I think it's maybe the one, the weak link on this football team. And, and keep him in the pocket, Brett Favre, and you have a chance. Second and 11 from the 29. And a whistle, no play. And Edgar Bennett would have gone for a score. Boy, did he shoot through a big hole and no white jerseys there, but a false start against Green Bay. Dick, there was a whistle, but you're right. This was going to be a touchdown. They caught Denver in a blitz. Nobody there when you get through, when you crack the line of scrimmage. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 86, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. When you crack the line of scrimmage against the blitz, that's what can happen. There's nobody in the secondary to make the tackle. You know what's really bad about this? You got Antonio Freeman, the receiver out on the top of the screen that moves. You see him move on the top. He's not even involved in a play. They're not even going near him. He doesn't even have to block anybody, but yet he moves. If he had just stayed right where he was, it would have been a touchdown. Instead of 6 nothing Green Bay, it'll be second down and 16 from the 34. Throws intercepted by Steve Atwater. And Atwater is to the 25 yard line. A flag is down. I think he might call holding on Steve Atwater that time on Andre Risen. And that not only will be uh, cost Denver the turnover, but give Green Bay a first down. I think Favre's arm was, was hit or he was rattled before he threw the ball because that was really a bad pass. Gary Lane. Holding. Defense, number 27, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So Atwater, uh, guilty of the hold, and uh, costs his team his own play, the interception. Takes it back to the 29. Steve Atwater into coverage inside against Andre Rice, and watch him. Andre's going inside. He gets that hand on him. Hooked him with the left hand, pulled him somewhat. The back judge sees it, Paul. They're going to call that every time when you stick that hand out and stop a receiver. Atwater at safety all over the place. He's a safety linebacker. He'll blitz. Levens through a hole. Pushed to the outside by Romanowski. Can't tackle him. And Levens to the 21. A gain of eight. Phil, you were telling me about Friday when you saw the Green Bay Packers going through their motions or practice, how quick they hit a hole and how fast they practice. When they go in motion, they're fast. Look at Levens when he hits the hole. Watch how fast he gets there. Romanowski, the blocking is sensational, but how fast he gets into the hole. Yeah, you're, Paul, that was the one thing that struck me when I watched this Green Bay team. Bill Romanowski outside. He sees the run, has a chance to make the play, but Dorsey Levens gives him a straight arm and gets away. And a mix-up as uh, Michael Dean Perry shoots through. Dick, on second think, and two. I don't think I want to make a living trying to run against this team. Now, we've seen a couple of plays that worked. All right, they caught him in a blitz, and they caught him. You know, they got to the outside where, where one man missed a block or missed a tackle. But I don't want to make a living running. Yeah. Misdirection, traps in sides when you catch them off guard. That's when it works. That's when you can run against this Denver defense. That's a special teamer, Roderick Mullen, a defensive corner. Third down four. One in the backfield is far. Throws on an incomplete. First down inside the 15 to Mark Chamura. Chewy, they call him here in the Green Bay. Been out with a bad arch. Well, you talk about doing something quick. This is what this offense is all about. Brett Favre drops back, watch Mark Shemurin, number 89, just goes down a couple yards, and as soon as he turns, Brett Favre anticipates, throws it in there, get it done quick. That pass took less than two seconds for Brett Favre to make his mind up and where to throw it. Ten-yard play, first down at the 13. Favre in the front plate. Trying to hit Keith Jackson, the veteran tight end. Covering was John Mobley. You know, it's interesting about both quarterbacks. When, and I'll go back to Elway for a second. But Elway and Farr both, when they need a play, they go to their tight end. You did that with well, the Giants. Because they're smart, because their tight ends are really good. <laughs> so you, you go to those good players. That's what you do. You know, the coach says, you know, throw it to our best players if you can. Keith Jackson, 
And of course, on the other side, Chin and Sharp, they're, they're some of the best tight ends in the National Football League. Shannon Sharp uh, waiting for the offense to return. His brother, of course, Sterling, wearing the same number, 84, was a huge star. So snap does far and able to fall on it. This will bring up uh, third down in about 10. A couple of things I've noticed already in this game today. Brett Favre pulls out just a hair too early. You can see the ball hit his fingertips. That is the quarterback's fault. But the ball looks like it could be a little hard to handle because of the cold weather, the wind. It's quite breezy on the field, and the field looks very slick. I see all kinds of players slipping. I was down on this field running into the wall earlier today, and I'm going to tell you what, this, the, the grass wait. here, Dick, is about an inch and a half high. You were running? Right. Wait, uh, you uh, walked into the wall. Okay, well, kind of walk. Third and 11, and it's a screen to Dorsey Levens, and what a play by Alfred Williams, the defensive end to catch him by the heels and deny a possible first down. That'll bring on the field goal team. Maybe a possible touchdown. The Green Bay Packers, they love the screen. That's something the West Coast offense or the Bill Walsh offense that nobody does, but Green Bay loves it. Dorsey Levens, they got people out in front. To block it, it could have been a touchdown on Alfred Williams. Man, did he read that thing, Phil. As soon as Levis came out, he was going inside Alfred Williams, which is hard to believe that he was going inside on the stunt, saw Levis and came back out with him and made the play. Jackie, a 33-yard attempt. And the Packers take advantage of the fumble recovery by Sean Jones. Jackie from 33, Green Bay by three. Oh, on NBC is brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. By Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. By McDonald's, official break of the NFL. And by Staples, the office superstore. Green Bay capitalizing on the fumble recovery with the field goal 3-0 as we remind you experience the NFL all week long on NFL.com, the official website of the National Football League. For all the tackles and the touchdowns and a live game day scoreboard, click on NFL.com. Jackie's kick comes down to Byron Chamberlain. Chamberlain, the tight end, is across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Timeout, first quarter here in Green Bay, 7.50 remaining. NBC. 3-0, the Packers, who uh, took 11 plays to move just 26 yards and earn the 3-0 lead after the fumble forced and recovered by Sean Jones. Hey, kind of like that uh, cheese look on you, Paul McGuire, in uh, yeah. our pregame show. Kind of improved your looks a little, you know what I'm saying? I didn't realize that thing was a phony. I tried to eat it. <laughs> Denver, second possession from the 31. Graves' first throw is to McCaffrey. Complete gain of five. And that brings us to our first update of the day. We go to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Dick, and we go to Houston where Jacksonville has gotten a leg up on the Oilers. Natron means a one-yard touchdown run. Two years ago in the Chargers' Super Bowl season, he had 12 rushing touchdowns. That is his first of this season. 7-0 Jacksonville, Dick. All right, Greg. Uh, Musgrave with that completion. He had thrown just 20, completed 20 of 30 NFL attempts in his five plus this season uh, years in the NFL. Second down and four. Musgrave batted back into his face as leaping high was Santana Dotson. I mean, it's really difficult to throw over a defensive lineman who's back off the line of scrimmage about two or three different, uh, two or three yards. Now, Dotson is being blocked back off the line of scrimmage, but he sees the ball gets up, and he hits it with the palms of his hands. When you're a defensive lineman, you cannot make penetration, get back there, stop, watch the quarterback, and try to do that good job by Santana Dotson. Dotson coming to Green Bay after four years in Tampa Bay. Dad played in the league, Alphonse, with uh, the Raiders and the Chiefs. Defensive tackle. Musgrave fools the entire Green Bay team, and wide open is Shannon Sharp. 50, 46 of Green Bay in a first down. The entire Green Bay yeah, team had gone Bay to the far sidelines. First down. 17-yard play. From this end zone, you take a look at the left side of the screen, the whole... Packer defense oh. goes to their right. Yes. And Musgrave could have run, except he did the smart thing. Let's give it to Sharp and let him run and Heck. take a pounding. 
complete what? that pass, but Reggie White, third and five. Denver will run it. He thinks it's run. He's going down. Hey, I'm protecting the backside against the run. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> who's, that, who's that guy with the ball? It, First time Denver and Green Bay territory. Trailing 3-0. Six and a half minutes left in this first quarter. Musgrave underneath to Rod Smith. And uh, Smith, who played at Missouri Southern with the Lions and is a budding uh, threat for the Denver Broncos, has his first catch today. Phil, are you surprised that, that all the passes that Musgrave has thrown so far have been like eight yards or less? Well, it's smart, Paul. First, he's uh, his first start, so you know he's got to be nervous. The Denver offense likes to throw it short, but there's a little breeze on the field. They're going into it. That has to change your play calling, so it's smart to throw the ball short. Their first possession, they had four rushes. This possession, they've had four straight passes. Second and four, Terrell Davis, and nothing there. George Coons, the middle backer, plugging the hole. There's Coons, 53, from East Carolina. Davis with only seven yards rushing and three tries, leading the league. Handful of yards ahead of Jerome Bettis, Waters Sanders, and Eddie George. What a uh, find he was out of the University of Georgia, the 21st running back selected in the draft a year ago. I guarantee you those numbers will change drastically. Drastically. Third and four. No one in the backfield with Musgrave. Complete. Anthony Miller, first down at the Green Bay 28. You know something, Sims? Mr. Sims. Tell me. I have not seen this guy throw a bad pass yet. He had one knocked down at right. the line of scrimmage. But he, Musgrave has not thrown a bad pass. Well, I think you can see what he's all about. That play just illustrated he likes to catch the ball. He's smart. We talked about it. He knows the offense real well. Watch him. He's going to catch it. He sees the defense. He throws the ball on rhythm. It's a nice ball. It's easy for the receivers to catch. Mike Holmgren of Green Bay uh, scouted him when he was at Oregon. He said, uh, I've always liked Musgrave. I, I won't be surprised. Well, there goes Davis. And his first uh, sizable chunk of yardage down to the 22-yard line, a gain of six. Well, this is one thing that this is probably the number one play that the Denver offense runs. Watch the left tackle, our left guard, Schlereth pull inside. It's a trap inside. That is the play where they get most of their running yards from. There's Terrell Davis, first in the league and rushing first in total yards with his catches thrown in first and making first downs and his 13 touchdowns ranked fifth. Second and four. Oh, no, no, no. There's uh, Jamie Brown, second-year tackle, who is replacing Gary Zimmerman. Zimmerman, by the way, had the shoulder surgery earlier this Time week. He's been... False start. Offense. Number 70. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Yeah. This is a noise penalty. Here's what you see Brown right here. Watch him. I mean, everybody else is set. Uh, Sean Jones doesn't move until after Brown does. This, this really is the noise in this stadium is, is tremendous. Back to uh, Brown replacing Zimmerman, who has never missed a game in some uh, 10 seasons. Zimmerman had the shoulder surgery, and the show kind of guy he is, he said, if this had been for the playoffs, he would have started today. Oh, yeah. Know, rest him a couple of weeks. Yeah, and Shanahan said that, Mike Shanahan, the coach, told us that last night, too, that, hey, Gary Zimmerman said, hey, look, coach, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's, you know, uh, the thing about Zimmerman, though, Dick, he's played the entire year in pain. Second down and nine. Trailing 3 nothing. Musgrave. Underneath, complete, Anthony Miller, 24-yard line, short yardage, four maybe. As Musgrave is now five for six with the only pass hitting the ground, the one that Dotson rejected. Well, I tell you, again, the Denver offense, look up top, Anthony there, watching come inside. It's a zone coverage, so let me stop. There's a nice open hole here. There's no defenders. Musgrave reads it, throw it in there. This is an offense for the Denver is running. It's no different than Elway. Except Elway get down field a bit. This is called don't do anything stupid offense. <laughs> and use up as much time as he can. Down to three minutes left in the first quarter. Third and four. Fake toss. And the throw incomplete. First bad throw by Musgrave. Well, no, it was a pretty smart throw, Dick. He threw it where only his guy could catch it. And it was the same play they ran earlier on third down. But this time, which I can't never believe, on third down, cover, 
Shannon Sharp, that time Green Bay defense did it. Well, the other thing, too, is that don't run this play against against Reggie White twice. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, here's an old crafty veteran. You may run it once against him, but don't do it again. Jason Elam comes on. It's a 40-yard try with the wind at his back, gusting up to 22 miles an hour. Elam knocks it through, and we have a tie game here in Green Bay. Packers three, Broncos three, 249 left in the first quarter. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Brown on the sideline, he said, if you go offside one more time, give me the uniform, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb. I'm going to tell you something. Is Zimmerman tough that's or great. what? He no, that's great. Tough. He's over there. Hey, it's got to be killing him, not the place. So he's over there giving some advice, trying to help his teammates out. You bet. Desmond Howard and Travis Jerby on the other end of Elam's kickoff. Found uh, Desmond Howard, the former Heisman winner at Michigan. He's had a couple of pump returns for touchdowns. And he squeaks out a good return here to the 30-yard line. 27 on the return. 2.38 left opening quarter. Field in Green Bay where the Packers have won 24 of their last 25. They've won 14 in a row and uh, part of the reason the enthusiasm of these fans, uh, the attire belying the chill factor of about minus five. That guy's hey. minus about three brandies. Well, they sell beer here. <laughs> Far from his own 31, picks up Keith Jackson, who takes a big hit from Braxton and Aldridge. I Brett Far, although he grew up in Mississippi, kill Mississippi, he has been a cold weather quarterback. 15 and 0 in temperatures under 35 at Lambeau. Look at that quarterback rating. And look at that completion percentage in cold weather, the yards. But here's the most impressive, 32 touchdowns and only six interceptions. That is more than remarkable. Five, three for six today, 15 yards. It looks at second down three. Lots of time. He comes this one incomplete. Lionel Washington getting a hand on it, the veteran from Tulane at the right corner. Boy, didn't they just give him the opening to throw down to Antonio Freeman. I mean, Brett Favre thought he has. I have an opening, and Lionel Washington just closes on the ball. What a great play because he knew he had help from Atwater. But look at that move. That is beautiful. There's Atwater. And then Mike Lotus, we talk about the Green Bay protection. Brett Favre stands in the pocket, wants to go down the field. Mike Lotus comes around free. Almost too late. Yes, that was borderline. Third down and four. It's a three-all tie, less than two remaining in the first quarter. Five changing plays. Jackson's moving. They got Keith incomplete to Don Beebe. There was so much confusion, and Keith Jackson got up to move outside, and yeah. then he comes back inside, and he never does get set. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start. Number 88 on the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. I would hope so. <laughs> Watch Keith Jackson at the top of the screen, folks. Watch this here. You think he's confused? Should I go out here? No. Oh, I got to get back. No, I don't have time. You have to set for a full second. Yeah, we still kind of ease him down into that three-point stance. <laughs> Veteran Keith Jackson, he said, boy, Holmgren, he is a master of detail. He said, I'm the ad, ad lib uh, star. He won't let me ad lib. He says, I am the best ad libber in football. And Mike Holmgren will not let him do that. Stay with the pattern and be precise. Alfred Williams this time. He bit on the snap count. Far, almost intercepted by Ray Crockett. Well, that was a good job by Brett Favre. You could hear it in his voice. He gave it that one extra hut. And Alfred Williams, too anxious to get to the quarterback, jumps too early. Let's uh, listen to Favre. Just that little delay. You give a loud bark and then follow that one with a real snap count, and that's enough to get Williams to step offside. Well, any good pass rusher, which Alfred Williams is, if you're the opposing quarterback, if you don't get him offsides once or twice a game, then you're not doing your job. So... You know, the Denver Broncos, good pass rush. They're going to jump off sides every once in a while. Lucky, 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 lucky. Five under deep, wide open. Antonio 
Freeman. He had gone in motion, delayed over the middle. No one picked him up. Game of 16. What they do, they send Antonio Freeman, number 86, in motion. Watch him to the top of your screen. The defenders get a little confused, and look at the hole it creates for Brett Favre to throw it in to the open space. Easy first down for the Packers. That Bill Romanowski's man at 53 should have been sliding because there's nobody in the backfield. Freeman last year with only eight catches was a non-starter, and this year with the injury to Robert Brooks is the leading receiver coming in with 41. Edgar Bennett who wants more carries. It doesn't get much this time. Alan Aldridge with Tyrone Braxton making the stop. You know, it really is amazing when you're sitting up here and you're watching how quick they get to the hole when they go in motion. You were talking about that. It's hard to believe that when you when you go in motion, you know, most guys go in motion, they trot out. To yeah, make, sure, make, make sure the defensive guy sees me like, hey, yo, I'm going out in motion. Come on out here with me. These guys are flying. Edgar Bennett now three carries for a minus two yards against this defense. Uh, toughest in the league against the run, Denver. I think a lot of that's because of speed. They have it in every position on defense. Second and eight. Bennett again. Wow. Lost back to the 49. Fumble the ball after the whistle. Ray, Ray Crockett, the corner, comes up, sees the play, diagnoses it, and gets to the backfield and that, that says a lot about your defense when your corner is so aggressive. Watch Michael Dean Perry of the top two. He does a good job, pushes, gets back in the backfield, but look at Ray Crockett, number 39, coming in and just doing a terrific job. Probably the final play and will be the final play of the opening quarter. Jackie, a 33-yard field goal, Green Bay. Elam from 40 yards for Denver. And after one here at Lambeau Field, it's tied at three. to Green Bay. We go to the second quarter. They change ends. Green Bay with a win. It's back. Tied at three. And Favre, a tough third down quarterback. And he looks at third and 12 coming up. Leads the league. Rating 95. 10 touchdowns. He's made one third down and long already in this game. Under pressure. Gets away from Hasselback. And now throws downfield. Going to be intercepted by Atwater. Atwater, who had one nullified by his own penalty, picks it off at the 20-yard line. It is his second of the season. Well, I don't know where to begin. Terrific <laughs> pass rush. What coverage down the field by Steve Atwater. They get good pressure on Brett Favre up the field. Harold Hasselbeck makes him scramble out. Now, this is where this guy's the most dangerous. But he throws it down the field, and Steve Atwater makes some adjustment to get to the football and make the inter interception. You know the guy that makes this interception work is Darius Johnson, number 25. He doesn't hesitate. When he sees Favre come out to the outside, most backs will back off and start covering. What he did was he forced Favre to throw the ball to that man, Steve Atwater. So Bill Musgrave for the injured John Elway starts from the 21. Pitch back to Musgrave. Throwing for McCaffrey wide open, and he's down at the 41. No, he was back up. He actually had regained his uh, footing, and so gets another five, six yards, and a total of 27. And Musgrave took quite a pop as he delivered the ball. Well, it was a good job by Musgrave up top. Anthony Miller's going to clear out. Watch Ed McCaffrey come across. Look at the big hole. Musgrave sees it, anticipates, and gets rid of the football. Eddie McCaffrey going across the field. The safeties, everybody running deep. And being smart, knows he wasn't touched, gets back up, and gets a few extra yards. Look like Leroy Butler, and he says it's not Leroy, but Leroy. Yes, number 36 on a safety blitz. He has five and a half sacks this year. First down at the 48, Terrell Davis invades Green Bay territory with a four-yard gain. You know, you, you and I were talking at the beginning, and you said about if you're going to run against the Green Bay Packers, they've been pretty good this year against the run except the last few weeks. If you're going to run against this team with Terrell Davis, you run inside the tackles. Inside, they like the trap inside. And, and the big thing I see today, you just cannot generate enough speed to go outside because of the slippery conditions. Same initials as his idol, Tony Dorsett. TD uh, always sounds good to a running back. Second and six. Musgrave to Shannon Sharp, who has a first down at the 39. Well, how smooth does my boy Bill Musgrave look? <laughs> wait, 
All of a sudden, now it's his now. boy. Your boy now. Yeah, well, I, I thought he would come in and play well because he seems to be not real excitable. He throws on rhythm, and he knows this offense so well. And this offense is kind of like Green Bay's. It is set up for a quarterback to do well, to hit a high percentage in seven. Quarterback nine. friendly. That's a good word for it. Seven for nine, 81 yards for Musgrave, and a first down at the Green Bay 39, tied at three. Davis, not much there, picks up a couple. When you think about the league this year, it's been an amazing uh, uh, consistent story that backup quarterbacks, when the main guy gets injured, come in, and they win. Craig Erickson for Miami, uh, Burline, Freeze, Johnson, Craig. I mean, it's almost every time a, a big guy is uh, injured, the backup comes in and wins a game. Well, I think Justin, the, yeah, that's right. And, Justin and, and the third guy, Kerwin Bell, comes in the other night wins. But I think it is, and this is a good example here, the team gets tired of hearing they can't win when one guy is out, and it kind of riles up the whole team and the coach and staff, and they come out and play pretty well. Second and six, his main uh, target cover. That was a dangerous pass for a loss to Craver, who was covered by Brian Williams. Williams had a pretty good shot at it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Bill Musgrave does a good job of looking at watching here. He's going to go back and he's going to say, he's covered, he's covered, he knows his outlet is to the right. I know he sees the defender, but he can't stop, but he throws it anyway, and that is just lucky it's not picked off. I'm going to tell you, you got to give credit to this offensive line of the Denver Broncos. Those guys that on that particular play did a great job to give Musgrave a chance to look at four different receivers. A loss of five on the play, third and 11. No one in the backfield with Musgrave. with a corner blitz. Well, this works just like it did in practice for the Green Bay Packers. They got some blitzes from the outside. They came free in practice. Watch Doug Evans up top. Comes in. Nobody sees him. The offensive line doesn't see him. There's nobody back in the backfield to pick him up. That is easy for a defensive player. Tom Rowan in the punt for the first time. Into the wind, he sends an end over end kick. Desmond Howard at the 13, a flag down, and Howard at the 22, just as he was picking up steam, tackled by Jeff Robinson. 39 on the punt, Robinson nine on the return. Let's check the flag. That flag was thrown down from the official down by the 10 yard line. Desmond Howard returned to the 23 yard line. Packers ball, first down from that spot. That's got to be a, a, a defensive penalty, I, I, I would have to believe, because it was thrown way down the field by the back judge. Well, a considerable uh, discussion about the call, and uh, Gary Lane still not quite certain. Well, it, again, it was thrown by the back judge down the field. Frank Winters is the Green Bay representative. Now that could be a guy leaving too soon. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you don't know until they give you some word or a signal, and we've received neither. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 25 on a kicking team, running out of bounds, did not make an attempt to return. 15-yard penalty, re-kick. Darius Johnson, the rookie from Oklahoma, so that's a big penalty when your kicker now has to punt uh, back into the wind. Well, Dick, here it is at the bottom of your screen. Here's Darius Johnson. You can see that he's out of bounds. You've got to come back in bounds immediately, and I, I don't know. He ran two or three yards, five yards at most. He's running full speed. That's uh, pretty thin. That is thin. That's right. Thinner than hospital soup. That's thin. <laughs> oh, boy. I know. Oh. Terrible. He wanted to use that in the preseason, but he never had his... <laughs> So 15-yard penalty after an 11-yard sack and a completion that was a minus five and a bad kick now by Ruin. That's going to get Green Bay great field position. They're going to get the ball uh, very near midfield. Timeout, 10-46. Left in the opening half. 
Fell on NBC is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Transamerica, the power of the pyramid is working for you. By 1-800-CALL-ATT, dial it for collect calls and save money every time you use it. And by Direct TV, satellite TV at its best. A couple of farm boys like uh, Sims and Enberg, that's a welcome sight, the pastoral Wisconsin countryside. I don't know about you guys from Youngstown. You didn't see too many. Those red, that red one was a barn. The other one was a silo, Paul. You're kidding me. Look at this Tom Ruins punt. Watch the ball, folks. Watch it turn sideways. When it goes sideways, the ball has to go out of bounds. Watch. Here comes a drop, and watch that turn. You've got to hit that thing flat on your instep. He missed it. What's it, 14 yards? 24 yards. 24. What a lovely punt that was. 42-yard line, Green Bay, tied at three. Favre. He was juggling, and uh, they're going to rule that incomplete. Yep, good call at the 46-yard line. Antonio Freeman was still bobbling it as he left the field to play. Ray Crockett, the corner for Denver. Here's a play. They just know Freeman. He has no chance. Look at the official come down. Watch. He's looking at his watch. Oh, I got my watch. Yeah. It's a quarter of seven, <laughs> and he bobbled the ball. Ten to one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He was setting his watch. It was a little head on him. Five now four for ten. Straight backs. Hold the hold the. Five. Under pressure, throws incomplete. Freeman had broken free, but uh, pass awry. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, in Houston, Steve McNair and the Oilers have pulled even with the Jaguars. McNair, 23 yards to Ronnie Harmon, who makes it into the end zone. With the extra point in the second quarter, the Oilers have tied Jacksonville. It's a 7-7 score, Dick. All right, Greg, here it's tied as well at 3. 10.36 left in the first half. And Brett Favre takes him out of the huddle, third down, 10. away. What a play. Now the long throw for Andrew Wisen incomplete. Flag down. Glenn Cadrez shot through cleanly. Couldn't get to Favre and uh, perhaps because Green Bay guilty of the hold. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask Holding you something, Phil. Offense, number 77. Penalties declined. Fourth down. As a quarterback, this guy has no one to throw the ball to. They're covered. I'm talking about great defensive secondary coverage by the Denver Broncos. Well, you think you can take advantage of this uh, Denver secondary? Even when he got those that extra time, look, 4-12, still nobody can get open deep down the field. Craig Hendrick with his first punt. Rod Smith at the other end. Beautiful spiral by the former Notre Dame. Smith, a uh, belated late fair catch and uh, takes it at the 13-yard line. We'll return. Tied to three. Excellent job of catching the football and punch. The reason why, he never takes his eyes off the football to look at the punt coverage. He does it by feel. He knows the ball was up in the air too long. You better signal for a fair catch. Denver at the 13, tied to three with Green Bay here at Lambeau Field. Musgrave to Terrell Davis, can't get outside. Eugene Robinson, 41, comes up to make the hit. This is an interesting first half. Each team has three possessions. Each has one field goal, each with one turnover, and each with one punt with uh, 10 minutes left in the half. This game right now is totally in the hands of the defense. Agree? I think Denver's offense has done a pretty good job. Been a little unfortunate moving the football, bad break or two, but, uh, you know, the Green Bay defense, good enough to make the big plays to stop them from scoring. Second and 10. Musgrave tipped and incomplete. Intended for McCaffrey. Wayne Simmons, number 59, tips the ball. The one thing I can see, Wayne Simmons, again, if you're a defender, watch number 59 on the end of your screen. Short drop, look, read the quarterback, get up in the air. Short passes. Green Bay, I would be a little more aggressive. Denver has not shown they're going to go down the foot field with the football, making sure he can stretch the defense. For the first time, Musgrave in the shotgun, and he has company. 
And back there alone, now he sends McCaffrey in motion. Underneath to Shannon Sharp, tackled at the 20 by Leroy Butler. And it's short of the first down by three. What a nice play by Leroy Butler. You know, the one thing about Sharp is, all right, well, if he's going to catch the pass, go ahead. But make sure you make the tackle as soon as he does catch the pass. And that's exactly what Butler did. Well, he said that Shannon Sharp, he knows he's too strong for him. He said, I'm not going to get into a wrestling match with him. He'll throw you aside. Yeah. I'll play back. And I might just, uh, he said, I might take a gamble once and dart in front of him. Ruined the punt. Desmond Howard, beautiful kick into the wind. Wynn now catches it and at the 34 Howard. Gets to the sidelines and out of bounds at midfield at the 50. Timeout. Under nine left in the second quarter. Welcome back. Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator, has to be proud of what he's seen the first half from Denver. Alfred Williams showing his quickness to deny a long gainer. Lionel Washington in the right spot. Ray Crockett coming up to deny Bennett forcing a loss and Steve Atwater in the right place for the pick. That's why the Broncos reputation building defensively and look what they've done to the top rusher for the Packers minus six yards on four carries. Increased quickness on defense. That was Mike Shanahan's goal and it is paying rich dividends. From the 50-yard line, far caught in the backfield for the first sack of the day. Michael Dean Perry and John Mobley will argue as to where it might belong statistically. I don't know what to say. There's so many good things for the Denver defense this time. First, they come up in a, in a blitz look. Watch Mobley, number 51, comes all the way around with his speed, makes the sack. Brett Favre checked off to get rid of the football fast, but the receivers were so well covered, he couldn't throw it. Well, Robinson's defense, a minus four on that first down, second and 14. Robinson's confused. All of his things are working. He yeah. doesn't know which one to call. I'll throw anything out there. Go ahead. Go get him. Packers come out with two tight ends, Jackson and Chimura. Five. Complete to Freeman at the Denver 47. Lionel Washington, the tackler. It'll be third down and about eight. You know, what I'm seeing, when I'm just looking here, at far, first of all, he doesn't have enough time to throw the ball because everybody's rushing him out of the pocket. But the other thing is, there's nobody to throw the ball to. Well, that's the difference, uh, Paul. A lot of times when Brett Favre gets out of the pocket in previous games, he makes a lot of plays, and he win the game, win their games sometimes because of that. This Denver defense can react. The defensive lineman can run him down. He doesn't have those chances. Freeman to the left, to the right, Andre Risen. Denver was offside. Free play for Favre. Tackle back at the line of scrimmage by Michael Dean Perry, but Green Bay is going to get a free play on the five-yard penalty. I'm going to tell you what. Now this is this is really an iffy call. This is oh. a terrible call by Thank the official you. to make this play because those guys were not offside. They took they made a hesitation move. They were not even in a neutral zone. Offside defense number 79. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. They're saying Jumpy gathers 79. Well, well there's Jumpy inside. Look where he is. He be can't be offside. It's got to be at number 94. In, that's who they're calling it on. Jeff Robinson. Jeff Robinson. But his head never moves. His body did, but his he did not go forward when he flinched. That's a terrible call. But it's a five-yard uh, penalty marked Here off, and Green Bay now with third down and three. Seconds. Bennett, the lone running back. has his first catch of the day and the first down on Green Bay. With the injuries to wide receivers, the Packers signing Ryzen, who was uh, released by Jacksonville. Well, look up top of your screen. Nobody around, nobody underneath Andre Ryzen. Brett Favre does a good job of reading it and gets it outside to him. Andre Ryzen in his years with the Falcons, averaging uh, Per game, five catches and uh, three quarters of a touchdown. 
Oh, what a nice defensive play by Washington to reach in and deny Antonio Freeman. Washington very proud of the fact that he's one of the 35 and older cornerbacks with Albert Lewis and Daryl Green. And he said, I really learned early with the Raiders those four years behind Lester Hayes and Michael Haynes. Yeah, wasn't that great to hear? He says, I went out there and I wasn't mad because I wasn't starting because look how good they were. But he set back and he learned from those two good cover guys. And boy, as he put it to good use, he is a good, solid corner, 35 years old and still getting it done outside. It is remarkable. Very smart. Very smart. Second and 10. They spread it out this time, Green Bay. And then give it to the fullback. Dorsey Levens. And Levens, who carries uh, 235 pounds on his 6-1 frame, short yardage, Braxton and rookie Darius Johnson with a tackle. You know, the one thing about jumping together is when he's in the ball game, number 79, Phil, it's it's going to take two. Yeah. I don't care where you go along the line of scrimmage. They're going to put two guys on that guy. It, it really is funny to watch jumping gathers in there. And when he comes in, he tries to pick up an offensive lineman. And these guys are usually big and fat. Well, they're big. <laughs> I don't mean fat, but he tries to pick them up, which is, is quite remarkable. The old forklift gets under both armpits and just lifts them off the ground. Far down the middle. Jackson and a first down at the 18. 14 yards for Keith Jackson. Uh, little histrionics from uh, the veteran from Little Rock, Arkansas. Only the seventh completion in 16 attempts by Favre. Play action pass keeps the linebackers underneath. Keith Jackson just goes across and Brett Favre throws it into the open space and well, Keith couldn't ad lib there, but he does a good job of finding the open hole. First down at the Denver 19. Five and a half minutes left in this first half. Edgar Bennett. Close to the 15 before the whistle sounds. Alfred Williams, 91, with Bill Romanowski backing it up. Now, you think it's easy to play quarterback in the National Football League. Look at Brett Favre. He's trying to get a snap. His chin strap, he took it off. It's gone. He can't get his side. I don't need it. Heck, my line will protect me. <laughs> they won't hit me. Yeah. Well, yeah, they right. protected there, but it cost them uh, 10 yards. They've called holding. Offense, number 52. 10 yard penalty. Still first down. Center Frank Winters, the only real experienced uh, player in that offensive line. He's in his 10th year. Watch Frank Winters, number 52, inside. He's the leader of this offensive line, and immediately he gets his hands outside the shoulders, and you can see the river, he threw that flag as soon as that play took off. Well, the problem, the worst part about the play, not is it holding, but he has Taylor, the guard, to his other side who was going to help him on a double team, so he really never had to hold anybody. He's had help on jumping gathers in the middle. Whoever he's blocking, he's, they're, they're double teaming in the middle. Under five minutes remaining in the half. William Henderson, the only back behind Farr's. Another offside. And the whistle no play as the pass goes to Jackson. It was Mike Lodish who lurched forward, made well, contact before the snap. I mean, it's it's enough. Come on, guys. How many times are you going to jump off sides? Well, they may have called this on offense because I didn't think Lodish touched anybody. See, if you're offside on defense and you don't touch anybody, they don't call it. But if the, when they blow that whistle, it's got to be against the offense. That's a good point, and Mike, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about what? Well, I was getting ready to get on him and blame him, and he didn't do anything wrong. Well, let's see. I think it's on a receiver on the outside movement. Uh-oh. And it may be Ryzen, Andre Ryzen, number 384. Well, so far we got a penalty on eight people. Yeah, I know. But the thing about it is the defensive man, if he doesn't touch the offensive man in the line of scrimmage, the play goes. He's just offside. If he would jump across and, and hit the guy, just touch him, it's stopped. Here Prior we go. to the snap, false start, offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty, first down. Good call, Paul. Andre, is it Ray? It's Dre. Dre. Dre Risen. Andre Previn Risen, if you will. Now that's when they see the, see the official on the side. He just throws a flag. He already sees him move before the ball snap. Doesn't make any difference what the defense does now. So from the 19 yard line back to the 34 on a 10 yard hold and a five yard false start. Love the game. Love the game. 
First and 25. Favre. Short on that one, intended for Freeman. And time now to go to New York for this NFL update. All right, Dick, in Cincinnati, Jeff Blake to Carl Pickens has been a pretty potent combo. 36 times they've clicked for touchdowns over the last three years. This is the latest, a 14-yarder with the extra point. The Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens are now even at seven under two minutes to play in the first half, Dick. All right, Greg, thank you. Cincinnati Bengals looking for their sixth win. Playing well for Bruce Coslett. Second and 25, far from the Packers. Inside hand off to Dorsey Levens, well read by the Broncos. Holding his ground was rookie Darius Johnson. He's a fourth round pick from Oklahoma. Oh yeah, Mike Shanahan feels that in the future they've got some real good speed developing at the corners. Darius Johnson and young Torrey James, their second round pick from LSU. Yeah, even Lionel Washington had a lot of good things to say about the young corners. So Mike Shanahan's got a feel in the future when his corners get a little too old that he has good replacements and come in and keep playing man-to-man -man coverage. We're down 21. And time called by Denver. Broncos uh, unable to get the right personnel on the field with just under four minutes left before halftime. The Broncos had to call timeout because they didn't have the proper people on the field. Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator for the Broncos, had a little refresher course of the hand signals to make sure that that doesn't occur again. Dick? All right, Jim. Second down and 21 at the Denver 31. Uh, Green Bay trying to make a third and 21, trying to break this 3-3 tie. Far with some time, Dillon complete to the nine. Depending on the mark, and it will be marked well, it'll be a first down. Now he threw that ball hard. That is just a wonderful job by the offensive line. Look at the time they give Brett Far. He's able to step up. They're able to clear everybody out and get an open an open hole for the receiver. And look at Brett Favre. That is like, well, that's the number one. That is a fastball. Good follow uh, yeah, through. Like Rocket out, man. Outfield right fielder throwing you out on the at the plate on a tag up fly ball. Favre positions the Packers first and goal inside the nine. Fake to Bennett. Throw back in. Uh, it's complete, but. Nowhere to go for William Henderson in John Mobley's arms. He winds up as uh, someone did some good schooling on that Denver defense to pick off that play. You know, this play has been run by the San Francisco 49ers when Mike Holmgren was there. Here in Green Bay, by anybody that's worked under Bill Walsh, play action to the left. The full bucks on the left side comes underneath. And, of course, Denver runs the same play about every week, too. So they should defense it well. Mobley did a great job. The drive that started back at the 50. Stopped at the five, fights to the four. Steve Atwater came up to help out. Jumpy gathers on the tackle. Braxton there as well. Jumpy gathers underneath. I mean, what you just what he does in the middle is just phenomenal. He gets double teamed almost every play he's in. Number 79. Here's a double team. Look what he does. He oh. fights him off. He fights winners off. He makes the play. Now is that any good? As we approach and hit the two-minute timeout, two minutes left in the half, Green Bay threatens to break this three all time. I'd like to remind you we have Saturday NFL action next weekend, 3.30 Eastern time with the NFL on NBC. Then you'll see Junior Seau and the San Diego Chargers against the Chicago Bears. Special Saturday edition NFL on NBC next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. Third and goal, Green Bay at the four, tied at three. Final two minutes of the half. Far changing this call. That's Dorsey Levens. Far throws, incomplete, no flag. It appeared Lionel Washington made early contact on Antonio Freeman. But Denver has forced uh, the Packers to bring on the field goal unit. Boy, don't you love what Denver did, though, Dick? They, they line up in one defense, showed Favre one front, and then he called an audible. They, they switched over, and then Lionel Washington gave him the opportunity to look at the outside. You think you got it open? Watch his hand come in and knock the ball out. Boom. 
That's a good play. Really a good job. Lionel Washington comes off his receiver, sees it coming outside. He knows they have the blitz on. He's waiting for the quick throw. Good job by Lionel Washington. So that took him 12 plays from the 50, stopped at the four, and Jackie's second field goal attempt. No more than an extra point, and Green Bay leads 6-3, to three, a 22-yard field goal. If you are free in car trouble today, look for the AAA Wisconsin Park in the stadium parking lot. Mike Holmgren's uh, offense uh, certainly been checked by Denver's defense, and the same can be said Green Bay's defense uh, holding off the Denver attack. A reminder tonight on Dateline. We exposed some gaping holes in airport security. The result was an FAA crackdown. Dateline's hidden camera investigation continues. Plus, story of a man who risked his own life to save another. An amazing story of courage and survival. That's tonight on Dateline here on NBC. Well, your impressions, uh, Phil Sims and Paul McGuire of uh, this first half in Green Bay. Haven't been disappointed, Dick. Everybody thought that this would, would be a runaway for the Green Bay Packers for some reason. The defense of Denver played very well. Green Bay, their offense struggling, but hanging in there and giving themselves a 6-3 to three lead. I think the, the, this game is totally in the first half. It's been in the hands of both defenses, and they've, they've, they've shown up very well. Now, Musgrave, I think, in the second half, they're going to have to let him, I mean, get, let him throw the ball downfield a little bit more. Has to go down the field, but look at Bill Musgrave. 9 of 12, 83 yards. Good job. Brett Favre hit the one big third down, third and 21. Good job by his offensive line, enabling him to have a 6-3 lead. And Dick Denver has two timeouts with a minute 54. Jackie kicks it off, short and high. Hebron racing up to the 19 to collect it. Oh, what a move by Hebron. He still is a live carry. Oh, no, they say he's down by contact. It appeared that he might have slipped under his own power and had a chance to run on. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, Dick, thank you very much. We will stay at halftime. Uh, we'll go back to our New York studios for the Domino's Pizza NFL Halftime Report with Greg Gumbel, Joe Gibbs, Mike Ditka, and Chris Collinsworth. They'll get you caught up on all the scores and highlights from around the league. And we'll have the second half of my exclusive conversation with Al Davis. Al reveals a very different side than you've probably seen. He talks about his 97-year-old mother and his philosophy. It's quite interesting, so stay with us here at halftime. Dick? That's fascinating stuff, Jim. So is that hat. I only got to give me a dozen of those hats in different colors. I'll tell you, that's beautiful. First down at the 37. Musgrave to the sidelines, and Shannon Sharp denied by Leroy Butler. The one thing that I watched when Musgrave was warming up, Phil, is he is he, he, a little bit late getting the ball out there. He's got to get it there quicker. But Leroy Butler, here's a good example, stays off of Shannon Sharp. He waits till he makes his cut, goes underneath him, Dick. There's the shot you've been looking for. He said he would take a chance. That was a time to take the chance and make it happen. Butler leads the Packers with five interceptions, one for a touchdown, 90 yards against San Diego. 144 left, first half. Bill Musgrave underneath to Shannon Sharp, and he's drilled by Butler. So Butler just wearing him like an old coat. <laughs> Yeah, but they had like three guys on Sharp that time. I mean, Musgrave, you've got to go someplace else with the ball. You can't just keep going back to Sharp time and time again. You know, they had that thing in Green Bay years ago with his brother Sterling Sharp. They threw the ball to him all the time, but he could get open, get the things done. All that Green Bay's doing now is they're putting two people on Sharp and covering everybody else with one. You better go someplace else. Sharp uh, Shannon and Sharp Sterling, their uh, brother combination, only 13 catches from 1,000 between them. Third and seven. Musgrave incomplete to Mike Sherrard. Broken up by Tyrone Williams. <laughs> I know what Sherrard's looking at. Sherrard's looking at, wait a minute, how long can you keep your hands on me? Sherrard's coming down the field, and the whole time, they're on him. I mean, that's Tyrone Williams. Watch this. Watch his right hand. Look, Look at the, the right hand. hand, the left hand, the right hand never leaves the back of Mike Sherrard. That's pass interference or holding. You can call either one. Illegal check. You get a choice of three. Williams punt. Desmond Howard. Fair catch at the 27. 
34 yard punt no return 51 seconds for Green Bay to try to add to their 6-3 lead. Well, you know they called Darius Johnson out of bounds once before. Look at Look this. Look at this. Is this blatant or not? <laughs> no, they don't call that. He's trying to wipe out Mike Holmgren. Favre to the sidelines to Freeman. It's a catch out at the 44. With 45 seconds left, first down Green Bay, 17 on the play. Well, they ran this exact pattern early in the game, and Brett Favre underthrew it. They come back to it. A good job by Freeman. When you talk to the defensive backs of the Denver Broncos, they say that guy, Freeman, runs the best pass routes of any receiver they faced this year. Four catches and 72 yards for the former uh, Hokie from Virginia Tech. Underneath, no one picks up Chamura, and he is breaking tackles. 35, 30, and out of bounds at the 28. You have an all-out blitz, Phil. Romanowski comes, and nobody covers the tight end. They didn't cover either one. The tight end. It's an all-out mess up. That's what it is. Two people come out. Nobody's covering the tight end Tremura or the running back Dorsey Levens. There had to be a mix-up between Bill Romanowski and the other linebackers. And Favre trying to call timeout, but uh, he was already his man out of bounds. Didn't matter. Time had been stopped. 37 seconds. That was a 29-yard catch, the longest of the year for Tremura. Screen. Levin's got a blocker. 20 to the 19 yard line. Toppled by Lionel Washington. Timeout Green Bay. 29 seconds left and the stern look on the face of defensive coordinator Greg Robinson. Is there any other team in football, Phil, that runs more screens than the Green Bay Packers? Nobody runs more and nobody runs them near as well, Paul, as the Green Bay Packers. A lot of teams during the offseason have studied them, tried to pick up some of these screen plays and run them. But you know what? They've been doing them for years. You know, the one thing, Dick, about screens, screens, you can, you can run them perfectly and they don't work. you got to pick the right time to run one, the right play, the right, you know, in a, in a situation like this, here they are, they still have three timeouts. They're inside, what, 35 seconds, and to run a screen that takes a lot of time. They're one of the few teams that will do it. Well, that that's something Mike Holmgren, he brought to this offense. He learned it from Bill Walsh, and they didn't run the screens. He put these in. He believes in them, and that, and changing personnel, wide receivers and running backs. Uh, he gave uh, high credit to uh, Walsh's uh, pursuit of excellence and perfection. He said, like a kid, I said, boy, well, if I ever coach, yeah. I'll never be that demanding. He said, I'm <laughs> doing the same thing as Walsh. Oh, uh, that was great to hear. From the 29, three for three is far on this drive. Now Bennett on the draw. Hit hard at the 14-yard line by Tyrone Braxton. Second timeout spent by Green Bay at the 23-second mark. Well, the AFC, NFC, many are wondering if the AFC will ever win a Super Bowl. It's been since 1983, NFC dominating. But this has been a year to give American Football Conference fans some hope. And uh, here are records of the teams, AFC's best against the NFC's best. Two best records in football, what's happened in the NFC, going back to 75, winning all six of those. Now we have the best of the NFC against the AFC today, and Green Bay leading six to three. And room for more is Tyrone Braxton being attended. He might have caught uh, a knee from Bennett as he was down low to make that tackle of the Green Bay fullback. Well, Tyrone Braxton, number 34, tackling that Gravinic, goes down low, and you, oh, look at that knee to the helmet. Just watch Venice right knee. There it is where he catches him in the helmet. You know, the one thing about the Denver Broncos, Dick, being 12-1, if there's been an injury-free team this year, it's been this team here. They, I mean, they've really been able to pick and choose where they want to play. Even guys with little nicks, they can put them in. You know, I always think good teams stay injury-free better than other ones because they're the ones dictating the pace of the game. They're the hitters most of the time. They're the more aggressive, and that's the reason they don't have injuries. There you see a confirmation of your point, Paul. Uh, Denver, number of players uh, starting at least started at least one game. And also, I think another important factor for Denver, they play on grass all season long, only three games on AstroTurf. And I'm a big believer that players respond 
Their bodies respond better. I know they do. Playing on grass, they do on AstroTurf. And they don't work them into the ground either. These guys, I mean, they work hard at practice, but they don't do pads. They get the things done. They do everything in timing, and just take a look at it. it it's 12 and 1. It's got to work. Can't argue with it. Well, two, uh, you'd add two more to the 27 with Elway not starting today and Zimmerman not starting. And by the way, a break for Green Bay because of the injury to Denver. Timeout is not charged to Green Bay. They still have two remaining in the final 23 seconds. First down at the Denver 14. Muscles away from the pass rush, throws in the end zone, touchdown, Antonio Freeman. Now you talked about the quarterback and why he's the man. He makes plays. Michael Dean Perry sacks most quarterbacks on that effort. Not far. That play says it all about this Green Bay football team. It's a blitz. Denver has perfect coverage on. Nobody's open. They should sack the quarterback. He gets away. And forget that. Very few quarterbacks can make that throw after they get away. A strike to the back of the end zone. Jackie's try for point and a very important touchdown in the final minute of this first half that sends the game from 6-3 to 12-3 Green Bay and now 13-3 on the extra point. The one thing that Favre did more than anything in this play is he backs up enough. He retreated enough and not to take the sack. Watch his feet. Now here they come up the middle. Michael Dean Perry, 95, has got him right here. But watch him stiff arm, then retreat. Now he sets, sets up to throw the ball. And Antonio Freeman at the other end. Watch Antonio Freeman, number 86. He's covered in the end zone. He sees Brett Favre is free. He runs across the back of it. Hey, these guys have done this all year long. They know their quarterback can get out of trouble. And forget that. Watch this. Ryan winds up and on a line. Perfect throw. We should point out that... Tim Hawk, 37, was in there replacing the injured Braxton, and that's the man that was ultimately beaten. Dick, how many times do we hear a coach say after a game, we have great players that make great plays, and great players are supposed to make great plays. Well, folks, Brett Favre and Phil Simms has said it many times, if I'm going to build a football team and I'm going to start with one quarterback, the guy I'm going to start, start with is Favre. Well, Simms has been sending him flowers and candy for the last two <laughs> years, <laughs> congratulating him on being the league's best. Uh, How can you not like Favre, though? Is he, he's oh, he's unbelievable. Country, and he will, he'll never change, you know that. He's the Bobby Lane of uh, this era. The tight end, Byron Chamberlain, brings out the spinning kick, fumbles the ball at the 35. And uh, it appears Denver was able to recapture it. 11 seconds left. Jeff Robinson on the football. Jim? Dick, Michael Dean Perry, when he came off the field, apologized to every member of the defensive unit saying he should have had the sack. Each guy came uh, off the field. He said he was sorry. He said he should have had it. Should have never been a touchdown. And also, Tyrone Braxton twisted his left knee, and he will return in the second half. All right, Jim. Does that mean Michael Dean is going to give this game check back? You never know. I don't think so. He's not going to give it to you. I do know that, <laughs> even though you're one of his favorites. That's my pal. Yeah, he likes being around you, Paul, because he feels... You going to tell a story again? Are you going to no, tell no. him? Go ahead. No, no. I'm not even going to do it. <laughs> he has nothing but nice things to say about you. Sure. 11 seconds, and no chances taken by Denver. They give it to Terrell Davis, and he struggles for a five-yard gain out to the 40, and that's it for the first half. Green Bay's fans stand and cheer. The Packers leave with a 13-3 lead at the half. We'll be sending you to our NFL on NBC studio in New York, but first, a message from the NFL and a word from your local station. FC Central. They score 10 points in the last two minutes of the first half and enjoy a 13-3 lead over Denver. Denver with a nine-game winning streak coming in. 
Five first downs without John Elway. Did a good job defensively against the rush, but uh, Brett Favre, that final drive, was the Favre that they've cheered here in Green Bay the last uh, several years. Well, Denver's defense stopped them uh, the whole first half. Brett Favre made the plays. That's the difference. Denver's offense, they got to force the issue a little, take some pressure off their defense, get the ball down the field. Just remember, Musgrave hasn't thrown the ball, I don't think, one time over eight yards. Dick, he's got to get it down the field. I don't care who he's going to throw it to. Someone other than Sharp. Green Bay will receive Mike Holmgren in his fifth year here with the Packers. When he left San Francisco as their coordinator, Mike Shanahan took his place for three years before he moved on to Denver to become their head coach a year ago. So their paths are shadowing one another, both influenced by the Bill Walsh-created offense. Elam sends it into the win. Desmond Howard at the eight. Behind the wall. At the 17-yard line, Darius Johnson with a tackle, and here's Jim Gray. Well, Dick, I spoke to Mike Holmgren at halftime, and he said he told his team, hey, I told you guys Denver's a very dangerous team, and they showed how dangerous they were up until that last 45 seconds. He cautioned his team not to let down here in the second half and have another performance like that first half because he says Denver will hang in throughout the game. Now, as for Mike Shanahan, he was very pleased that this game is basically an even game except for a great play by Brett Favre there at the end of the first half. Dick? He saw Holmgren with his chill factor under 10. He's a native of San Francisco, yeah. and he admitted to us yesterday, I have all the clothing I can find to try to keep off the chill. He doesn't like the cold weather. He likes the team, though, in the cold weather. Far. Plenty of time. And uh, Steve Atwater had Antonio Freeman blanketed. That's all incomplete. Bill Romanowski. Well, let's take a look at Bill Romanowski. Look at this stance, how he cocks himself, looking back into the backfield. But watch what it does. Keith Jackson, he has him in man coverage. He pushes him, has great angles, and now Keith Jackson really cannot get away in time to get open. That stance, Keith Jackson says, it makes it hard for the tight end to get down the field, get away from him before the rush gets to the quarterback. And Romanowski learned that from uh, some of your ex-teammates with New York. Saw it on film and learned it from Carl Banks and Lattimore. Up the middle goes Dorsey Levens, and he is tackled by Alan Aldridge. That stance not only enables him, Dick, to do a good job Aldridge, against the pass, but it really does an outstanding job for him against the run. Alan Aldridge here is a linebacker on the left-hand side. Now watch what he does. He's reading the tight end, sees the tight end block, and now the first thing he does now is look back in the backfield. He makes a tackle on 11. I don't think that Green Bay wants to come out against the Denver Broncos and try to be conservative. If you are, you're going to get beat. I don't think they know how to do that, Paul. This, this Green Bay offense and Mike Holmgren, who calls the plays, they stay aggressive the whole game. Third down three. Barb scrambles, throws downfield, intercepted. Another interception. Braxton was injured in the first half, and Tyrone Braxton to the 28-yard line. That was much like the pick of Steve Atwater in the first half. Now, Phil, Favre is throwing the ball away. He, nope. yeah, he's throwing the ball away because the receiver's going downfield. I mean, it was too far to the inside. Paul, i got to tell you, he wasn't. He was throwing it down the field, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he's running right, and he hooks it, believe it or not. I just, I've done this many times. Good coverage. The secondary, look at that. They pressure the quarterback. It gets away from him. He's trying to throw it outside to Antonio Freeman. Tyrone Braxton, he has had a, Dick, a super year this year. Mike Shanahan told us yesterday. Again, Mobley coming up, forcing it. The eighth interception, and Favre not liking it a bit. First down as Braxton gets Denver to the Green Bay 28. Trailing by 10, Terrell Davis. Out to the 23-yard line in a gain of five on first down. Tyrone Braxton, who played uh, at North Dakota State, was the next-to-last pick in the draft of 87 and having the best year of his professional life. I like what he told us a couple weeks ago. He's doing so well, but he left in 1994 to go to the Miami Dolphins. Denver's defense had a terrible year, and he goes, it was good to know that I wasn't the problem on that defense. So he's come back, and he's really played well the last two years. Second and five, Davis again. Trying the tackle slot to the 21. Back to Braxton, it's especially... Uh, uh, fulfilling for him to play well here today because he grew up in Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Remember, he uh, used to 
Dick Graves as a kid during the summers. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he told us that story. What what happened? It he was, knocked the was, tombstone over, over once. And he looked down. He was standing. It was it's, Braxton. It said Braxton. But it was a great uncle or something. It was yes. Yeah, so that was, was scary. That's right. But I'll tell you one thing about him. When he went after that interception, a lot of players don't sacrifice like he did for that ball. He knew that was his. You saw Davis now has passed Otis Armstrong, the all-time Bronco rushing season. And I don't believe he made the first down. He did not on the third and about three. Made a yard, and on comes Jason Elam in the field goal unit. See, the one thing about Terrell Davis that, that the Green Bay Packers know, and everyone in professional football knows, that he runs from tackle to tackle. Very rarely does this guy, leading the league in rushing, go to the outside. He stays inside, and they play him that way. Three straight runs by Davis, so Musgrave not throwing the ball at all, and now a 39-yard attempt by Elam. He scuffed it a bit, but... Knocks it home, and it's now a touchdown lead for Green Bay. Braxton's interception leads to three. NFL on NBC is brought to you by Acura, who invites you to test drive the new CL Luxury Sports Coupe. Buy Snickers, not going anywhere for a while. Grab a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? By IBM. Season's greetings to a small planet from everyone at IBM. And by Coors Light, proud partner of the John Wayne Cancer Institute and their search for a cure. Broncos after Braxton's interception, a 39-yard field goal to cut Green Bay's lead to seven. Oh, that's an earmuff. And Elam has it teed up in this uh, weather. Temperature around 30, but uh, with a 20-plus mile-an-hour winds. And you can see they need to have some help just to keep the ball on the tee. The chill factor down close to zero. and it's Darius Johnson back-to-back -back tackles on special teams for the Oklahoma rookie. Well, tonight, it's a race for the family fortune with Phil Hartman, Jerry Burns, Michael J. Fox. Nine yards on the kickoff return for Howard, one of the best in the league. So far, his first possession, second half, begins, or second possession, starts at the 12. Intercepted in uh, his last time on the field. Comes out throwing whistles and uh, no play. Old hey, start. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dick, but this Denver defense has given him fits. Favre is checking off. Snap. Fault start. Offense number 89. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Chamar, but this defense has really given him fits. They're moving around. They're going in gaps and they're coming back out again. What Chamar number 89? Whoops. Well, that can happen. Brett Favre changed the play. The players become a little uncertain, and a lot of times that leads to making movements before the snap count. Ryzen to the right, Freeman to the left. From the seven, first and 15. Favre over the middle. Freeman dumped at the 20-yard line. A gain of 13. It'll be second and two. Atwater and Mobley, the tacklers. Antonio Freeman, a big receiver, not afraid to come across the middle. Lionel Washington, number 48, thought it was run, got fold on the play action fake, and it was wide open. Here's Romanowski again, line up on Shamura the same way he did on Jackson. Look at this, Shamura is kind of blocking him, trying to release. But Romanowski, there's no place to go. So the century mark in yardage for Antonio Freeman. They call him Button. And he's got 100 yards on six catches. Henderson, who carries rarely, has just over 100 yards rushing all year. But they may be bringing this one back. The preliminary signal was holding. Holding against the Green Bay Packers. That hole was a little bit too big, but I... <laughs> yeah, well, no, you know, I'll tell you what, though. And I'm not taking any way, anything away from Green Bay's line. But all their runs are deception. People moving, get them out of the backfield. Holding offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty, second down. That's John Michaels, the left tackle, a rookie from USC. 
He's up, up on the top. top side, yeah. You see he's against Alfred Williams, and he gets beat so fast. And oh, wait, oh, well. that is a terrible call. <laughs> Here's another one. How can that guy call that? Oh. He didn't grab him. It's away from the play, too, so you've got to take that into account sometimes. And you're right. No, there was no penalty there. Second down and 12. Favre under pressure. Batted in the air. Is it intercepted? No. A shot. Mobley diving for it. Could not quite scoop it off the ground. No, Mobley was the man who deflected it. And it was Aldridge, Alan Aldridge, the other linebacker that was uh, trying to dig it out before it well, hit the Lambeau Field turf. I'm sorry, Dick, but what's Mobley again? The linebacker coming around just to speed. Look at the pressure they're putting on the quarterback. And Mobley with the speed there just gets in the face of Brett Favre. And really, lucky for Green Bay, it's not intercepted by Alan Aldridge. Third down and a dozen, Green Bay. Red Denver's going on defense. That come after him every time. Rice in motion. Favre sets up. Four on the play. The one thing about this fellow, look at it far. Now watch the defense. Watch what he has. Look at the lane he has to throw. It's wide open for him to see Chabura coming open down the field. When you're going to rush four guys, you cannot give him a lane. And watch Brett Favre. Good job of following through. I love after he throws every single football, the body language. Got to run. Oh, help it, help it along. And no matter what the throw is, he moves with it. First down, and he goes upstairs. Incomplete to Freeman in a jump ball contest with Ray Crockett. Oh, man. Ray Crockett, what a great job he did on Freeman downfield. He, he's watching Freeman, then he looks back at the last second to see the ball, and then go up and knock it away. Here it is here. Look at Phil. Now watch. He'll look back at the ball. Oh, Great timing. defensive play. And he goes up and knocks the ball away. That's outstanding. Crockett's down. Well, let's watch Brett Favre. After he throws it. Oh, he's moving. Oh, catch it. Oh, no, he doesn't know. But it, it really is. It's funny to watch Brett Favre after every single throw. He lives and dies with it. Favre was also a pretty good uh, imitator. In fact, he gave us an example of how he sees John Elway. We have a chance. We'll share it with you. Ray Crockett down. We'll take a break. On NBC. Back in uh, Green Bay's Lambeau Field, uh, John Elway with a hamstring injury, not playing today. There you see uh, Ray Crockett seems to be okay for this play at least. Torrey James, the rookie from LSU, number 20, plays at the right club. Flag again, and incomplete the pass to Freeman, and uh, Favre for the fourth or fifth time today has drawn uh, Broncos offside. This time it was Ernest Jones. Offsides, defense, number 72, five-yard penalty, still second down. John Elway, uh, the third quarterback today, not going to play, and Elway did warm up, and of course he has a distinctive style, that pitch and toed uh, yeah. strong arm looked, and Brett Favre has studied him, and uh, here's his <laughs> impersonation. <laughs> oh, it's awesome, he's got it. Hey, look how he walks along. <laughs> Just leans the head. That's what I like. <laughs> he is a character. Oh, guns. And it's complete at the 49-yard line. A tough catch for Freeman with James right on him. I, you, I don't know how Atwater misses this ball. I mean, Atwater, look at him. Freeman's laughing. He says, this should have been touchdown Denver. Look at where this ball comes and where Atwater is. Well, Favre hesitated. Atwater read it. He hmm. went for the interception, but the one thing he didn't take into account. Brett Favre throws it about 90 miles an hour, and he gets there a lot faster <laughs> than most quarterbacks can get it there. Did it ever. Now the Green Bay first down. Remember, this started way back after the penalty from the 10-yard line. 13 to 6 the score. Nine minutes left in the third. Blitz. And he hits Freeman, and now he's in the clear. Oh, Blitz for Braxton with the And it's Antonio Freeman. Touchdown today. He's got eight catches, 100. 
52 yards for a man. You can see his left arm. He broke his arm at midseason, came back early, and has he been productive? Well, on his play, two things happen. The ball is in the right spot. They read blitz, and he, he throws it outside. But also, number 88, Keith Jackson, comes back and makes a great block on Braxton that enables Freeman to get the touchdown. Well, Brett Favre with a bullet throw, and Freeman having another big day for Green Bay. Jackie's extra point. 88 yards in six plays. 3.08 for Favre to get his team in the end zone again. Freeman breaking away from the rookie James gets a block on Braxton. And the Packers celebrate 20 to 6. Davis continued his feud with Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen's raps at the Raiders and I over the last four years have to be answered eventually. It was a cover-up. This fella is not the angel that he likes to make himself out to be. The NFL on NBC next Sunday. Welcome back. It's Craig Hendrick kicking off this time. He hits a blower to the six-yard line. Vaughn Hebron to the 25-yard line. Back to the touchdown and a great throw by Favre. It sure is. Watch Steve Atwater, top of your screen, number 27, comes free, jumps. Favre throws it underneath him, actually, gets it to the receiver. Now watch Antonio Freeman. The ball's behind. It turns him the other way. That enables him to get free from Torrey James and score the touchdown. So an injury to Braxton in the first half, and Freeman scored his touchdown then. And now the entry to Crockett and James, the replacement, unable to corral Freeman. But it was Favre who got the ball through an impossible fence of Denver players. Now a 14-point lead and the crowd alive. Musgrave, first throw of the second half. Throws it away. Aaron Craver covered by Brian Williams. Well, watch Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator. Ah, he's tore up over this. I mean, he's mad because he knows it's the perfect call. You get the safety free, and the corner's number one job, do not let them make a big play out of it until they catch. Apparently the cast on that broken forearm cracked, and so he's going back to the locker room, and he's not injured. Second and ten now for Bill Musgrave. Jones pressuring and incomplete to Craver. Same play to the other side, and Jones decks Musgrave as he throws. Well, Musgrave now is, is, is looking downfield, and the reason he doesn't see anybody because they're all covered, and he just kind of dumps this to Craver the outside. John Jones is in there, gets him at the ankles, but he's all right. When I looked at that whole secondary field, there wasn't a guy even close to being open. Two straight plays. They've covered them all. Bill Musgrave, who has returned to his home state, Colorado, played high school ball at Grand Junction. Packers show blitz. Musgrave steps up and overthrows and should have been intercepted through the arms of Leroy Butler. That would have been his sixth. No, make that Mike Pryor, an extra DB. Pryor in there. And the fans love the defense. Pressure on the quarterback makes the ball get away from him. It's an overthrow. Fortunate it's not intercepted. You know the difference? We see Musgrave and Elway. Elway steps up and then makes the throw. Musgrave sits there and doesn't step up. Tom Ruin to Desmond Howard with 10 Packers on the line of scrimmage. He scuffs this one. Line drive to Howard, who takes it to the 48-yard line. Jeff Robinson to tackle again. Timeout. 8:15 left in the third. The exploits of Darius Johnson, the rookie from Terrell, Texas. Well, everything's big in Texas, but the field's only 53 point something wide. <laughs> they finally learned how to get back in bounds because that was a short punt. Ray Crockett has returned at the corner for Denver. Broncos burned with his uh, absence from injury of the last series. And off to Bennett. Smothered at the 50, a gain of two. 
Mike Holmgren, we asked him yesterday, you know, he's got kind of a young baby face, and back when he was a young guy uh, in his 20s, did you grow the mustache because you want to look older? And he said, well, I kind of guess. And he said, I said, how many times have you shaved it? He said, three. And the last time was this last year. He said, you know, in Green Bay, you have a little success. Everyone knows you. And he wanted to shave it. He took his, got his hair cut, put on a hat. They went to Paris with his wife, Kathy. One first days looking in the Louvre at the Mona Lisa. And somebody says, hey, coach, how about an autograph? <laughs> oh, is that awesome? Oh, offside. Another one. Free play for Farr. Horizon incomplete. Let's see, there were two other times he said he shaved it. Um, once was when Kathy had one of their four daughters, and he, he went in to see her. He said, I got a real short haircut, shaved my mustache. She laughed hysterically. So we thought, what would it look like for Holmgren without the mustache? So... Uh, Oh, that, well, oh, that's not exactly funny, but he does does change his appearance. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I keep that thing on my lip for you. Well, you're biased. You need to grow one for your, well, never mind. I have a mustache. No, the other time, the first thought. time he shaved it, high school coach, yes. first job. He was 0-22. Finally won a game, and his player said, let me get to shave it off. He, yeah, he thought it was a safe, uh, safe bet if he said, I'll shave it if we win. <laughs> Keith Jackson tried to run before he caught it. He had some running room. You know, there's one of those things where you just see Favre now throw the ball. He looks around. People are covered. He can make things happen, and he can't put this ball in a better place. He hits him in the hands. Well, it's a little it. Yeah, well, it's a little bit behind the receiver. But the thing I'm noticing, this Denver defense has been out on the field from the second quarter all the way to now. Their offense is not keeping them off, and they're getting tired. They're not getting to the quarterback. They pressured him every single play, but in the last few passes, they can't get to him now. Third down and three. Guard stepping up. Gets away. Gets a block. There's Jackson incomplete. Unhappy with himself. After all that work, he had a man open and overshot Keith Jackson. <laughs> I'll take a tired guy on that field. is number 95, Michael Dean Perry. Michael Dean Perry is chasing him all over the place, and then he gets knocked down. He actually gets clipped, but it's in the backfield, and, and, and again, that's legal. Watch number 95, the right of your screen. Now, when he comes back out this side, there goes Michael Dean down. He's clipped. Far <laughs> throws <laughs> a little body action. Oh, only the second punt of the day for Craig Hendrick. Rod Smith, fair catch at the 12. Ooh, it looked like he fair caught the ball. Did he not take no? 18-yard line, no flag. Denver has the ball at the 18, trailing by 14. I'd just like to add my personal condolences to uh, Kerry Roselle and the family and friends of Pete Roselle. He was a terrific leader in a time where we all admire those qualities. Pete Roselle yet had time to always tap the shoulder of the little guy. 30 years ago, I received a phone call in my rookie year as the Rams announcer, and Pete Roselle, the commissioner of the league, said, I think you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Yeah. He meant, that meant a lot to me, and what he did for all of us watching on television, because that was the vehicle he used so well, should mean a lot to everyone who watches and enjoys this game today. This is Pete Roselle. Oh, my. Bill Musgraves. Leroy Butler from a safety position planting the quarterback of Denver. Well, Leroy Butler has blitzed about six times today, and I think he's come free without being touched five times. Watch him, number 36. You're the quarterback. Look at the hole. Good job by the defense. Spreading their players out, letting him come in there. Fritz Shermer doing a good job with the blitz today. You are, when you and when you send more people and they have the block with, I mean, you've got some major problems. Tells you something about this defense. Butler has more sacks than Reggie White. Six and a half now. Cross to Davis, slide down, no play, full start. And you know what, Dick? I think Leroy Butler is going to tell Reggie about that come tomorrow, too. Did they kind of get after themselves in the meeting? You know, the thing is, though, Reggie White, you tired him out. Prior to the snap, false start offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty, second down. Fritz Schirmer's defense 
Creating another play. Well, Reggie White, his favorite target was Phil Simms in his great career. More, <laughs> wait a minute. Well, you, you know, uh, Neil Olmax, he just held the ball too long. That was his problem. <laughs> You know what, Joe? Uh, I'm surprised Reggie just stood all that punishment I gave him over the years. <laughs> he said he could have hurt himself hitting you. That's so. right. Crowd making it tough on Musgrave. Pumps. Throws for McCaffrey, but no chance. Well, let's uh, just to give you some evidence to make you feel good, Phil. We thought you'd enjoy reliving your encounters with Philadelphia's Reggie White. That was kind of that little easy toss down. I love you, Phil. And then he just dragged it down. Then he said, well, how about these? Just kind of drive you into the turf. Oh. Oh, that last one really hurt. That put me out of the game. You fumbled. You know, that's not nice. You fumbled. I know I fumbled. If you got hit by Reggie White, oh, you fumbled come on. too. You fumbled. Reggie said you called him a bad name. And that's why he got even yeah. with you. He did. Now from the eight-yard line. Third and 20, Musgrave underneath. Mike Sherrard, not much there at all. Tyrone Williams on the coverage. No fumble, no fumble after the play. Out at the 11-yard line, the ball ruled dead. But what's happened here today, the first couple drives, Denver's offense had success. And then Green Bay changed their philosophy. They said, let's just get after the quarterback. Let's pressure him. Pressure the wide receivers because they're not going down the field, and the strategy has really worked well. Ruined the punt. 45-yard line, Howard. Willie Wood was the last Packer to return two punts for a touchdown in the season. Back in the Vince Lombardi Super Bowl Packer days of the 60s. Another wobbly kick. Howard lets bounce. And it's down at the 49. Of Green Bay. So Packers lead here at Lambeau. Let's go to New York for a report. All right, Dick, in Houston, the Oilers jump back into it against the Jaguars behind their fine rookie Eddie George. Six yard touchdown run, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. He's over 1,200 yards for the year. 17 14 Jaguars early in the fourth, Dick. Thank you, Greg. Uh, that Eddie George, the uh, Heisman winner of a year ago. What a season for the Oilers. Some wondered if he ran too tall and too long-legged, but he's got that Eric Dickerson style. Yeah, he does. Long striders seem to, to do well in college, but not many of them have been successful in the pros, and he's done a good job adapting. And it's, it's really been a big plus for the Houston Oilers. First down again for Favre at midfield. Incomplete as he tried to hit... Antonio Freeman and John Mobley, the uh, rookie linebacker, 51, makes the play. You know, we've been talking all day about how good the Denver Bronco defense is, number one against the rush, and all, all, all these things happen. But I'm going to tell you now, Phil and I were talking just when we went to a break. This Packer defense today showed up. I mean, we saw last week, we saw the Oakland Raider defense do a job on Miami. You're seeing a, a defense right now that made up their minds they're going to shut down the Denver Broncos today, and they did it. Fritz Shermer has been a terrific coach wherever he's landed. He sure has, and uh, the nutty professor always comes up with good schemes that work. Far faking as Levin's on the draw play to the 41-yard line, a yard short of a first down. Mawa Tanovasa made the tackle. Look at how nice he carries this play out. Watch Favre. Forget where the ball is. Watch what Favre does. Look at this. That holds the defensive lineman. I know he reacts to every when okay. he throws, he reacts. But I'm gonna tell you what, that does hold a couple of people and, and enables Levins to get downfield for about nine yards. Well that's the, the basic Very philosophy good. here. The run to set up the pass to set up the run. And there are the fake pass. And Mike Congren said it best. He says, I hate running on first down because I really truly hate second and nine. Quarterback sneak for Favre and a first down inside the 40. What does that? What does that tell you now? Wait a minute. He said, "Here's here's Favre with a quarterback sneak now to pick up the first down. He just goes in behind the center." Wait a minute. Now, what, he, what he's saying? I don't have any confidence in my running game. No, what he's saying is I have a lot of confidence in my passing game, <laughs> and we're going to throw a lot of five-yard patterns instead of trying to run it. And and the, you know the amazing thing too is Green Bay, a passing offense. You always say it can't work. In the Northeast or up here where it's cold, they've proven that it can work when it's cold and it's the field is sloppy and wet. It is cold here. Four minutes remaining. Third quarter, Levens 
driving inside the 35 yard line and we remind you that next Sunday for Saturday San Diego at Chicago here on NBC and on Sunday NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action 12 noon Eastern most of you will see Drew Bledsoe and the New England Patriots against Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys what a matchup in Carolina host Baltimore second half of our doubleheader will be at mile high Broncos hosting the Oakland Raiders others will see the Chiefs Colts or the Bengals Oilers all those games with playoff implications beginning at noon on Sunday and Brett Favre uh, trying to comfort the uh, umpire. Boy he took a whack on the left side of the face. The umpire is Jeff Rice. Oh, he oh, gets hit from behind. He gets, oh, he gets, gets hit by Levins. Levins. Hits him right in the head. He gets credit for the tackle, I think. But it's it's it. Watch him get hit. He gets pushed in, and mm -hmm. oh, but he did. That's unfortunate. But he's walking off the field. Just they cut his ear, but he did get credit for the tackle. Boy, the uh, umpires are uh, I, such a tough job. You're getting bound. It's a wonder it doesn't happen more often. Yeah, I'm always amazed. I watch films all the years I was a player, and now is doing this, and you see him jumping around in the crowds and. They really avoid a lot of hits. He's, he's got a little smile on his face. Oh, so. yeah, he comes up. He wanted, but I'm all right. I'm all yeah, right. I'm yeah. as tough as the players. I'm all right. I beat him up. I didn't even have a helmet. <laughs> Jeff Rice. <laughs> yeah, he's oh. 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 He really uh, <laughs> chewed up a little bit of that earlobe. Meanwhile, second down, four, four, five in the Packers late in the third quarter. Ball start against Green Bay. Seems as if the Green Bay for the last two quarters is the only team with a football on offense. Well, it's because it's true. They're the only team that's had it. You know, it's really amazing. Now, here's a team that, that, that a quarterback's thrown for over 3,000 yards. Offense, number 63, five-yard penalty, remains second down. The Green Bay Packers have thrown the ball for over 3,000 yards, Red Far, right? And in, in the National Football League, they don't have one receiver in the top 50 in receptions leading. I mean, that to me is incredible. Well, injuries have stopped that, but also the system, Paul, regardless of who's playing certain receivers from tight end or the wide receiver, they make it work. 3.15 left in the third, second and nine. to the 25 yard line, 30 yard line and just short of a first down the third and one well Green Bay spread you out the, the receivers are all over the field and Dorsey Levins there's nobody behind the line of scrimmage to pick him up except the safety Steve Atwater I'll tell you what's happening and you said it in the last series of down this defense for the Denver Broncos these guys are tired I mean yeah. They've been out there an awfully long time. Yeah, they've lost their enthusiasm. You can see it. And and the only way they have a chance to win this game, this defense is going to have to come up with a big play. Evans again. They're using him more and more, as you can see. Had a good game against the Bears a week ago. And there's uh, over 60 yards today rushing. Man that's uh, 235 that can run a 4-5-40. Gives uh, Mike Holmgren just another weapon. Well, it really has to be difficult for a team. And here's far with, with the Green Bay Packer offense. They're just moving up and down the field, just going up and down the field. And when you look at Denver, as soon as they get the ball, it's three plays and out. And they're quick three plays because they're throwing the ball and, they're, and the clock is stopping. Green Bay's going to, the time of possession this game is going to be astronomical. Yeah, Denver does not have a first down in the half, second half. Another first down for Green Bay. Levin skipping around one tackle, breaking two more. Battles to the 15. What a run. What a run by Dorsey Levins. Breaking the tackles. This did not happen earlier in the game, so it just shows you this entire defense. Adam Timber, Timberman, number 63, pulls out. Good job. Good block on uh, Bill Romanowski and just good effort on the run. But you don't, I mean, we've seen this Denver team four times this year, and you just, he's getting blocked, Romanowski, he goes back, and he really has no chance on a play. But you don't see this, we have not seen this Denver Bronco team miss this many tackles. One minute left in the third. Levin's given a breather, and Edgar Bennett back in. First down at the 15 of Denver. 14-point lead, Green Bay, and Bennett gets three, and then lurches forward. Whistle had not sounded. And uh, may have almost five on the play before Perry and Aldridge can collaborate on the stop. Well, the uh, 
the one factor along with Elway not being available today is that you clinch all of the motivational uh, plums. The Denver Broncos are going to be home throughout the playoffs. As long as they win, they're going to be home. Uh, they, the only thing that Mike Shanahan go, had going for him today in terms of uh, motivation was to say, hey, we, we're 12-1. and one. Let's maintain the high level of play. We don't want it to start on a downslide. Tough to tell men who uh, they played so well, and this is five throwing to the five-yard line. Shamura. They love Shamura up here, and uh, welcome him back. He's got it at the five, close to another first down at the end of the third quarter. The number one rushing offense in the NFL held without a first down the entire third quarter. The Green Bay Packers, it is all Green Bay, 20 to 6. Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL is prohibited. Welcome back. We go to the fourth quarter. Dick Enberg with Phil Sims, Paul McGuire, and Jim Gray. Green Bay scored first. Denver tied with the only field goal of their effort today, and it's been all Green Bay offense. Denver unable to move the ball offensively with backup quarterback Bill Musgrave. Now these Packer fans uh, are really special, and this is the second generation. This is the generation that heard from their fathers and mothers and grandparents about Bart Starr and Jim Taylor and Horning and Fuzzy Thurston and Henry Jordan and Mitchkey and Davis and all the great Lombardi Packers. And now they feel it's their time. As William Henderson burrows to the one-yard line. Well, that little song you're hearing, Dick, up here is called the Packerina. And I know you were doing it, and you looked very nice. <laughs> you didn't know he had that kind of rhythm. Did you? I really didn't. Did you See, this, he he now, there's a hat now. That's a hat. What is that? Is that a skunk? No, it's not. That's uh, what is that? Yeah. There's oh, a good there hat. Go. Hey, by the way, your your efforts trying to leap up that uh, Lambo leap will be something I'd like to see again. Oh, I wish you'd show Jim Gray's hat again. That's the best hat in the building. Second and goal, Green Bay. Fake to Anderson, fake on the reverse, Favre, turns it for a touchdown. Keith Jackson has his ninth of the year. A career high for the Pro Bowler Jackson. With his third touchdown throw of the game, his 34th of the season, he leads the NFL. Jackie again with the extra point. Go 50 yards, 11 plays, six minutes, and I'll lead it 27 to six. Well, on NBC is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Prime Star, mini dish entertainment with no dish to buy, and by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. Some of the 60,712, and that doesn't include all the luxury box occupants. The second largest crowd ever at Lambeau Field earlier this year in that 49er game that went overtime won by Green Bay. The record crowd have not lost all year at home at Lambeau. Hendrick to Hebron. Oh, rushing tackle. Number 55, Bernardo Harris. Well, the Denver Bronco defense today, it's really actually playing a pretty good game. They have just never seen anybody play quarterback like Brett Favre. Watch this. Jumps in the air, fakes the ball right, and then finds Keith Jackson in the back of the end zone. Now, check out Brett Favre after he throws it. <laughs> Gets excited. Celebrate. Let's say it. Son of a high school coach. His dad coached for 25 years down in Mississippi. Giving up. The Packers can't win by enough. Terrell Davis battles out to the 26 yard line. Let's check elsewhere. Back to New York and Greg Gumbel. 
All right, Nick, at Cincinnati, Vinny Testaverde from seven yards out finds rookie Jermaine Lewis in the end zone. His first career touchdown with the extra point. The Ravens grab a one-point lead on the Bengals, 14-13. Four minutes to play in regulation, Dick. Greg and Vinny Testaverde's had a terrific season with the Ravens. Yeah, but will anybody give him credit for it? No. Not many. That's right. Another flag. Now the right guard went. Brian Habib. Right in the snap. False start. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. You know, when you're, you're that big and you move before everyone else, you'll see it here, right there, boom. When you leave that quick, they're going to see it. You cannot be missed. You know, the defense is sitting over there on the bench for Denver saying, get a first get down. A first down. <laughs> That's right. Well, the only positive for the Broncos the entire second half was the interception by Braxton, and uh, they got a field goal out of that, but gained only seven yards after the interception. Six possessions, 19 yards of offense. Davis splits uh, that blitz and gets across the 30 to the 31, a yard shy of the first down. Their last first down for the Broncos was the third play of the second quarter. Well, Green Bay has all 11 defenders within about a couple yards of the line of scrimmage. Just giving this Bronco offense now no respect, knowing they're not going to force the ball down the field or go outside, and they're making it easy. Third and one. Throw to McCaffrey, and uh, finally a first down and horse collar by Eugene Robinson, Robinson is McCaffrey. You know, one of the things that offensive linemen love to do, and when you talk to them week in and week out like we have, is they love to run block. They really do because it, 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 they, they think that they have the advantage. Now, here's a play-action pass by Musgrave. Gets to the outside. McCaffrey picks up the first down in the defense. They're very happy about all this. But the, but when you, I mean, I said the offensive linemen like to run block, but when, when the Green Bay Packers put nine guys up on the line of scrimmage, now it makes that even difficult. It's abruptly 31 minutes for Denver to gain a first down. Davis. Robinson gets into the turf at the 45-yard line. When you consider the fact that if you're, you know that Elway isn't going to play and you're a defensive coordinator and Sherman's got to say, we're not going to let Terrell Davis beat us. And for Davis to gain any yards today is, uh, is going to be a credit to his talent. Well, I think uh, really, Dick, watching the game, I think that Fritz Shermer came out, showed respect to this offense because they did play a little soft the first couple series, but then he just he could see the pattern. He says, the heck with this. I got talent. We can be aggressive. And since they've turned it on and started playing aggressive defense, Denver can do nothing with them. Second and five. That's great. Just does skip out of And then he fumbles the ball. Recovered by Green Bay at the 35. Sean Jones and Doug Evans collaborate on the hit, and Reggie White recovers the fumble. That's why right, Doug Evans, a defensive back, again, pressuring the offense, blitzing. Musgrave never saw the pressure from behind. Doug Evans, the cornerback, 33. Musgrave didn't see him. He'd gotten away from Brian Williams, figured he had some time. Packers have the ball again, leading 27 to 6. NFL on NBC is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call now to enjoy a hot and delicious Domino's Pizza during the game. For hot and wow, call Domino's now. Welcome back to Green Bay, where the Packers have a commanding lead and have just recovered a fumble. Shannon Sharp unable to scoop that one in after Musgrave blindsided and hit by Doug Evans. Dorsey Levins having the best rushing game of his career. Picks up another five, six yards before Torrey James can get him out of bounds. Here's the play, Shannon Sharp, 84. Shannon Sharp has a chance to ball. Watch him short arm this thing. Mm. <laughs> missed it. It's hard to get those arms out there when you got too many muscles on them, Paul. Yes. Got those big old arms. He really does, doesn't he? The uh, 31-inch waist, and in fact, uh, 
Muscle Whoa. Media 2000 has him featured cover. Look at that. Bill. Oh, man. This looks a lot like me sideways, huh? Yeah. No, that looks like me sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Said I always had this thing about being big because my big brother Sterling would always beat me up, and uh, so yeah. he's always worked hard in the weight room. To the 25-yard line uh, appears to have another Green Bay first down and another update in New York. All right, Dick, and back to Cincinnati where the Bengals didn't trail the Ravens for long. Jeff Blake from one yard out to a wide open Tony McGee. They add the two point conversion, and it's a 21 to 14 Cincinnati lead on Baltimore with just over two minutes to play in regulation, Dick. All right, the Bengals uh, continue to play well. Wow, well, you, you got to give Bruce Coslett a lot of. Uh... A lot of credit for what he's done to the Bengals, turned it around, changed their attitude, and their aggressive discipline. They've always been fun to watch. Fire has to hurry. They play clock down to 5-4. Not quite a first down, third and less than a yard. Levens hit, falls forward inside the 25, and that'll be a first down. Steve Atwater made the hit in the backfield, but uh, Levens able to power his way forward. 84 yards now for Dorsey Levens, his career high. You know, one of the things this game has given the Green Bay Packers an opportunity to do too, Dick, is to work on their running game. You know, they're, they're ahead 27 to 6. Gives you that opportunity now to let's, let's work on some things that we haven't been doing very well. Following Green Bay, this is about the only time they really ever work on their running game when they know they got it won and they're just trying to run the clock out. They have not had a 100 yard rusher all season. To do it, Edgar Bennett this time. And unsuccessful. Alfred Williams made the tackle after John Mobley slowed him up. Boy, Edgar Bennett comes in the game, and all of a sudden the blocking just goes everywhere. Bennett nine carries five yards. Yeah. You know, you got you got a feeling when you come into the game because Bennett really has not had much of a day today running the football. So it was Denver was geared up for him to carry the ball and run it, not worrying too much about Levens. And here comes Levens, and he has a, a field day. Second and thirteen. You know what, though, watching this game, even though it's a dom dominating by the Packers on the scoreboard, I, it really doesn't change my opinion uh, too much about the Denver Broncos. I still think this is, I'd still argue it's the best team in football. Levens. Good man get enough speed to get out of some trouble to the 25-yard line. Aldridge and Romanowski tackles. And we remind you, next Saturday, Football NFL here on NBC 330 join us for the NFL on NBC and then watch as the Bears host the Chargers that's a special Saturday edition of the NFL starting at 330 Eastern game time at four you know Dick we came into this game with it. You know, here's the defense and they wanted to prove something the offense wanted to prove something for Denver hey this is not just John Elway's team well guess what <laughs> he's got a lot to do with it midpoint of the fourth quarter, third and ten for fire. Whoops. Levens was definitely going forward from in motion. The throw to Freeman. He has the hat trick. Third touchdown for Freeman. Will it count? Dorsey Levens was actually going forward in motion, but no call. for touchdowns for Freeman who has 175 yards today. And another third and long completion for five. And another great throw, Dick. I mean, that's that's the word for it. Great. This guy, he's, he's a highlight film. And yes, I know the receiver is open, but watching Stefan deliver it right on the money for a touchdown. 19 catches the last two games for Freeman. Great NFL action on NBC. Next Saturday at the special time of 3.30 Eastern, the Chargers look to stay in the playoff hunt against the Bears. Then next Sunday, a big doubleheader. First Bledsoe and the Patriots face Aikman and the Cowboys. Then rivals clash when the Broncos battle the Raiders. Next weekend on NBC. In his second season, Antonio Freeman, a non-starter a year ago, and back-to-back -back games for him. 
19 catches, 331 yards, three touchdowns today. As Vaughn Hebron flies flying, goes back to the 25 yard line. Flag on the play. Bill Musgrave, in his first NFL start, returns and will be facing some backup uh, defenders in the green of Green Bay. Illegal block in the back above the waist, number 59, 10-yard penalty, first down. You know, they can see this stuff, Phil, on, on a play like this. You mean to tell me you can't see this? Look at, look at. Watch Levin. Dorsey Levin's number 25 in motion. Oh, oh, he goes twice. He makes movement towards the line of scrimmage. Not called. Up top, you can see Antonio Freeman gives Lionel Washington a double move. Creates just enough of a hole for Brett Favre to throw a strike in there. And watch the people that greet Brett Favre at their touchdowns. How about this? Watch these eyeballs, folks. Hey. Uh, 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 uh. This is uh, Christmas early for Freeman with three touchdowns and a fumble. Here is uh, everything going against Denver, and the Packers have it again at the 15-yard line. And for a team with the best record in the league, nine straight wins, Mike Shanahan, everything is crumbling and collapsing in one afternoon in Green Bay. And there's not a fan here in Packer land that isn't uh, staying right here to enjoy it all. This is Smith coming up number 42. He trying Smith and he fumbles the football. But I can tell you right now, Mike Shanahan saying, let me get out of here without any injuries. Just let me get out of here. Is that Glenn Hebron? Doug Peterson takes over for Favre at quarterback. At the Denver 15, not a bad place to come into a game. So uh, Smith rarely used the backup uh, fullback fumbles on his first chance. Recovered by Brian Williams. Favre's four touchdown passes gives him a seat on the bench. And Travis Jervey, Jervey from uh, the mighty Citadel, the uh, Citadel. Ta -da! The Citadel, the, the only... The only school in the world, the, the did, Citadel. Paul, did you go there? Yes, yes, I did. I mean, but no, did what you I mean, attend there? Did you do? Did you go to classes? That's what I'm saying. I know you were there. I did four years there. Did you? Four years of what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jervy, wasn't he in the uh, NFL's fastest man? Fast, he came in fourth in the NFL fastest man. He's from the Isle of Palms, South Carolina. He's a wishbone fullback in college. He thought one pass. Called, told us that the only one pass. He didn't even know how to go in motion. <laughs> <laughs> Jervy again, and his jersey is on the ground. Mike Lodish makes the tackle. He's a interesting young guy. Talking to him last year, and he said, inspired by. Paul McGuire's history at the Citadel. He got a lot of tours. Is that what they call those, the tours? Yeah. Tours. What's the tour, Paul? That's where you walk 60 minutes with a rifle. I, <laughs> I hold a record. I just wanted to show you this. You know they called uh, they called movement on uh, uh, Habib on that last play there. If you take a look at the right guard, Timmerman, Timmerman, he was in motion, and they don't call they didn't call that play against the Green Bay Packers. Oh, and by the way, the injured official, they had made a change, and then we just went by the scorecard here, but Al Conway, to get the right man, was Fumble by Jervy, and Rondell Jones can't cover for Denver, and of course, Green Bay has another touchdown. It was right there for Jones, the defensive back of the Broncos. He couldn't cover Don Beebe, did. Let me tell you something about this play with Jervy. This was a play they had at the Citadel where he would fumble on about the seven-yard line into the end zone, and a wide receiver would recover for a touchdown. It, that's <laughs> another part of your legacy. <laughs> Look at this. Jervy is trying to make something happen, and, man, he gets he gets hit by his own man, the rear end of one of his own men, knocks the ball out. That's not holding on to the football. And then Jones dove on the ball. Oh. Freeman, Freeman has a shot at it, but B.B. is the guy that ends up with it. Jackie drives through the extra point, and the Bro Broncos now see Green Bay in front, 41-6. to six. Oh, Antonio Freeman could have had his fourth touchdown, but he lets the ball get away from him. Jones misses. 
Freeman misses. BB gets. Deep man to return Vaughn Hebron. He fumbled on the last Denver possession, recovered at the 15, and then uh, Jervy's fumble led to another Bronco score. And just as they approach the ball on the kickoff, the wind blows it off the tee. Craig Hendrick, who uh, was both the placement and punter at Notre Dame, doing some uh, kicking off again today. As Brett Favre just underlining uh, his greatness with four touchdowns, two interceptions for the year. He has 35 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions, a plus 23. Wow. Can you say uh, MVP once again for Brett Favre? And, and he's done it under tougher circumstances this year. Hasn't had the protection. He's just made a lot of the plays himself. Cameron going to gamble. White gets to the 20-yard line. Well, the uh, Denver defense just worn down, and that means missed tackles, ultimately. You get tired, you just aren't quite as sharp. Here comes Braxton. You watch him, he misses a tackle. I mean, it, it just, this is not the defense we've been seeing, but when you start making mistakes and you're on the field most of the day, this is what's going to happen. Well, when you're going to take chances, you must make the tackles. They didn't know situations. And then the running game gets going for the Green Bay Packers. They tie out the Denver defense, and then they overpower. On the 19, Juan Hebron, uh, maybe two yards on the play. And Jeff Lewis is uh, now in at quarterback for the first time this year, the rookie from Northern Arizona. Many feel that uh, this strong-armed young guy out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, is uh, going to be the heir apparent a couple, three years from now when Elway decides to hang him up. Well, he's got a quick release, throws the ball. Uh, well, and, and the other thing that he has going for him, great feet, can really run around, and, you know, he can make things happen in the offense, a lot like John Elway. So Bill Musgrave's uh, debut as an NFL starter, disappointing. And off the, no, fake to Hebron. Lewis keeps it inside and dives out to the 25-yard line. Will be a third down and four. This is really a nice time to come into a ball game, too. You know, it's it's below zero win chill factor. You're losing 41 to six. Hey, win to win this one for the Gipper. He's happy. He's glad yeah. to be in there. Paul, he doesn't care. What is good about this game for Denver? We know for Green Bay, this will clinch the NFC Central. Keeps them that one step ahead of San Francisco for home field advantage. How about Denver? Denver, I tell you, it gets them back. It'll make them go back and go back to some basics it'll make them a little scared I think it'll make them a better football team it just shows you how close it is between playing real well in this league and getting blown out Lewis to Hebron and Hebron has a first down at the 30 yard line and uh, Jeff Lewis can remember that his first NFL completion was in Green Bay and picked up a first down and you know Dick and Paul and I we've talked about this during the commercial breaks we said it earlier it, it's I'm just not that uh, I'm not phased by the score that much today. I still believe Denver is an excellent football team. And when the playoffs come, they are going to be really tough to beat. And I would not be surprised to see these two teams in the Super Bowl. Well, it looks as if they both could have. Well, Denver's got the home field advantage in the playoffs and Green Bay working on it. Ever. And, and you, you want to bring up the conversation AFC NFC. Well, let's don't forget now. Not even the best team in the AFC a couple weeks ago manhandled this Green Bay team in Kansas City. So, I mean, it's you know how the league goes and week to week, it's so different. AFC's best against the NFC, Buffalo and Kansas City unbeaten. Denver was until today. You know, Dick, when you look at it, Fritz Schirmer, you talk about how great a coach he is. And you, he's been around for, for a zillion years. But when you think about what he did, he looked at what, what Denver was going to do. had no idea what they are going to do offensively when they came out. Then he looked at Musgrave. He didn't throw a pass over eight yards. He knows, Dick, that th this team is going to basically try to run the ball, throw the short stuff. So what he did, he just adjusted okay. his defense and said, hey, if that's what you're going to do, then yeah. you have to beat my best defense. That's right. And, Paul, here's Fritz Schirmer. Been in the league 22 years. He has done it all, been successful as a coordinator in a lot of different defenses, and you never hear his name brought up for a head coaching job. Never. Oh, the time has passed by. No. Well, no, it isn't. Well, well, wait, is that, no, the image today well, is in the 40s, good looking, and uh, well, coming out of some uh, uh, yeah. fancy offensive scheme, huh? Yeah, I know. Don't let the facts get in the way of it. I mean, Fritz <laughs> just does a good job, and it's, it's just not good enough. <laughs> 
I think your point is well taken. All right. <laughs> McCaffrey, but what, look what Craig Newsom does to him, number 21, as he comes off the line of scrimmage. All right, here, first of all, hands to the face. But the important thing about this, watch this hit right here. This is illegal from the back, and that's the guy on defense. But look at this, folks. Standing right here is the field judge and does not throw a flag. Now, that's ridiculous. Well, that's how skirmishes begin. You know, you don't, uh, and uh, McCaffrey figuring it doesn't do any good to retaliate because he would have gotten the penalty. You're right. That's a good job by Ed McCaffrey not retaliating. And a bad job by the official. Jeff Lewis. Running out of room. Now scrambles, fumbles. Ahead to Detron Smith. Actually, it looked like he was trying to throw a little shovel pass, and they're calling it an incomplete pass now. Well, he threw it forward, so it is incomplete. Or he rolled it forward. Yeah, that's better. He rolled it. Well, it couldn't have been an incomplete pass because the clock is running, so they ruled that. Maybe the play dead. Well, they stopped at uh, 139. I guess it really doesn't matter. 41 to 6. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a dick. They <laughs> really don't. Let's get out of here is what they're saying. Jeff Lewis. They called him the Grand Cannon. <laughs> Down there in northern Arizona. Near the Grand Canyon. And that's Vaughn Hepburn down to the 49-yard line. And a uh, reminder tonight. On NBC, it starts with Dateline, followed by all new episodes, Third Rock and Boston Common. And it's the all-star comedy movie, Greedy, with Phil Hartman and Jerry Burns, Michael J. Fox, Olivia DeBeau, Kirk Douglas as well. What they'll do for money, you won't believe. It's Greedy. Tops a great night of TV on NBC tonight. Now, congratulations to these Green Bay Packers. Again, the NFC Central champions. As Hepburn on the pitch. As a first down at the Green Bay 47 in the final minute of play. You know, the one thing I like about the Green Bay Packers, they get home field advantage. You know, of course, the fans, the atmosphere is wonderful, but they got a quarterback that can really play well, throw the ball well in tough conditions. And I think that's so important because so many of these quarterbacks who are in the league cannot deal with the winds and the codes of most of the field, and especially up here in Lambeau. Mike Holgren's a team almost impossible to beat here in the cold weather months. Unbeaten at home this year, 7-0, and and Holmgren says, I don't want to play in Dallas again. <laughs> Never. I don't even want to fly over Dallas. They lost seven in a row to Dallas, all seven at Texas Stadium. Lewis underneath, incomplete. 11 seconds left. Hebron, uh, the intended receiver. And our thanks to all the crew here in Green Bay. The sounds and uh, pictures, the producer, Tommy Roy, today's director, John Gonzalez. Halftime uh, produced by Ricky Diamond, directed by John Gilmartin, associate director, Ed Fibishoff. David Gibson is our associate producer, production manager, Tim DeKime, and of course, the president of NBC Sports, Dick Ebersol. You can't find an empty seat. They stay to the final bell, cheering their Packers. Hebron, short yardage, final seconds. The Packers go 11 and 3, and very impressively, impressively dismiss the Denver Broncos, 41 to 6. The two Mikes, Holmgren and Shanahan, will they meet again in New Orleans in late January? We'll be back with more scores and highlights and more action. The final 41-6 Green Bay. So Denver returns home against Oakland a week from today. They have not lost at home all year. Well, they Green have Bay with two remaining as well. And you see Green Bay, Reggie White out in the field celebrating. And I think Reggie talking to him yesterday, he realizes the chemistry of this team and the atmosphere here, this is his great chance to get to the Super Bowl. And it all boils down to Brett Favre. He yep. was magnificent. And John Elway, without him, Denver's a different team, obviously. Well, he showed that week. a quarterback can hurt the defense. That's what happened to Denver today. All right, thank you for being
game with us. The NFC Central Division champions are the Packers. They beat the Broncos 41 to 6. Coming up next, don't miss the exciting conclusion. The Office Depot Father Son Challenge. Johnny Miller joins golf legends Nicholas Trevino, Floyd, and others. They team up with their sons. Final day of action for Paul McGuire, Phil Sims, and Jim Gray. I'm Dick Kenberg. So long from Green Bay, Wisconsin.